Welcome to the Coin Op Cowboys, a podcast where four guys explore the absurdities of everyday life, sharing our entertaining experience and insights on a variety of topics. Hello, Coin Opians. Strap on your shoulder pads and check your buddy's jock strap because we're taking to the field this week. This is the sports episode where Chris leads the discussion on everything sports. Now, as the only cowboy that played sports in high school and college, I ask all of you to go easy on these nerds. They're good kids. They were bullied most of their lives by my type, you know, <laughs> the jocks. I feel for them. It must be challenging in the shadows, you know. I wouldn't know because I was captain of every team I played on. It takes discipline, courage, good work ethic, and good looks uh, to thrive on the gridiron or whatever field you play on. Now, you may hear Steven say he played lacrosse, which is a challenging hobby, don't get me wrong, but between you, me, and a lamppost, he's running around playing fucking Harry Potter out there. I mean, let's be honest, it's not a basketball court, football field, or baseball diamond. He's playing Quidditch, okay? So thank you all for listening. You know, we appreciate you, and we hope you enjoy this episode. So also feel free to drop us a line. We love hearing from what's on your mind. Our email address is coinupcowboyspot at gmail.com. Like, subscribe, follow, and rate us. You can find us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple and Google Podcasts, and YouTube, anywhere you get your favorite entertainment. We release a new episode every week, so go take a listen to past episodes and get all cut up because you deserve it. Now, Let's switch over to the main stage. Chris is putting on a sportscaster's blazer, looking snazzy. Ryan is eating Taco Bell, and Steven is... He's bouncing on his bed with nothing but a jockstrap on. Huh. You know, he should really shave his ass. Let's hop on in and join the discussion. Well, the the ironic part, like, you know, Brett's a... uh... What is it? He's a he's a Patriots fan, and it's been years since the Patriots have actually come and played against the Chargers. So that doesn't happen very often. He's not a, but he's not a Patriots fan. He's a he's a Tom Brady fan. Mm, pretty no. So he was a he was a Patriots fan from the get go. When Tom Brady went to the Bucks, he became a Bucks fan for Tom Brady. So I think he had a little bit of both there. But he was still foundational Tom foundational Patriots fan. No, no, he's not. Yeah. yeah. Well, he could write in if it's otherwise. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I just know I wouldn't want to be a Steelers fan right now. I'm feeling pretty good, even though we just lost to the Patriots. All right, gentlemen, welcome to a very special episode, listeners. Welcome to you as well. Um, say something else. A lot of things. While I bring up because I forgot to bring things up. Yeah. Okay. Sound check. Am I too Ooh, much gain? Sound check. Too little gain? Ooh, are you am, am on I, your am, new microphone? Is this it? Are my, are my shirts just dirty and need a lot of gain on them? Why, yes, I am, Ryan. Oh, wow. Would you look at that? Snazzy, am I right? You know, Ryan, it's also great to see your uh, computer, like, functional. You know, like, power surging through it. Oh, you want to go? It's you fantastic. Go right Dude, why is he so right quiet? Now? Yeah, Who, me? Turn up your game, Ryan. Mr. Asshole. Now, yeah, now you're too far down. down. I'll have a serious bone to pick. Is this where you want to go oh, boy. Is Still quiet. Why don't you put that little thing down episode? on your headset? Yeah, you're really quiet. I <laughs> fucking turned it each direction. What I you think you're talking through your headset, Mike, and it's up when. top. Tell me when. Nope. No, I'm not. It's still quiet. It's Tell literally not changing volume at all. Yeah. It's not changed. Oh, that's because I was... Because you're messing, nope. you're messing with the volume. It's, so dude, it's, dude. I guarantee it's not that mic. I guarantee it's the one on your head. I swear to God, I selected it, Stephen. Okay. Tell me when. Tell me get when. Cl- tell get me close when. to it tell and yell when. into it. It didn't get louder. Okay. I now, heard myself. Now, now flip the little headset thing yeah. down and do the same thing. It's muted. When the headset's up, Try. it's muted. Watch. Oh. How do I sound? Better. So much better. Way no, better. No, so <laughs> much better. <laughs> you have like a volume limiter on your mic or something? It like won't like it didn't cap out. It says microphone yeti. I know, but when you yelled into it, it didn't get louder, it just got distorted. It was weird. It's like a volume cap on it. So do I sound better now when I flip this thing down? I just had to turn No. No, maybe if I just turn up my headset. The same. Talk now? That might be it. Toast. Toast. I'll live with it. All right, what do I do on this? Uh, well, it's the right pattern. Yeah. Your gain needs yeah, you to got go the right up. One. Try seventy percent. What the fuck my, does seventy percent mean? My, my gain so is no. all the way to the left is Clockwise. zero. All the way to the right is a hundred. Try seventy. Why are you turning it left? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> I'm gonna, no. He's doing this. Oh, he's trolling. That is not tro- right. That is trolling. left. Well, it's fucking yeah. reverse you when you're fucking doing this. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> okay, that's too far. That's too far. That's too far. Do you see the little volume indicator? I said 70%. If you look at your volume, you can see if you're redlining. Okay. Not right. redlining. Yeah. How about now? Yeah. This is oh, great. Although, great. Turn, turn the gain to Wait, end toast. for nice. Toast. Is this good? I can't are we good? see if my audio is redlining or not. There's no. A little better. No, you're green. I'm going to yellow. You're going to yeah. green. What am I going at? You're green. Doesn't show you yours. Okay. Okay. That means I need to fucking talk louder. Hello. Well, anyway, I guess that, that gave me time game. to too calm down. Because Chris... Too much Chris, game. What the fucking shit? You sound like shit. Just put it on the end, dude. There. Point to the end in game. What the end? Oh, the end in game. I, See? Like that word right. right above it? Oh. Is this where you, you want me? Yes. You sound, you sound really good. nice. You know, like the, N right. for nice. That, that, that calmed me down because Chris had me triggered. I don't remember why. So <laughs> I we'll did. Move I on really... for now. You know, I, I think oh, just... I remember why Chris pissed me off now. Here we go. Can, can I pick a bone yet, Angel, or is it too early? <laughs> Save it. You know, we got to do the questions and introductions. Otherwise, the the people listening won't know who's talking. But, Ryan, don't yeah. lose that fire. Yeah, don't lose the fire. You need to keep that intensity the entire up. time. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Coin Op Cowboys, the podcast where four guys explore the absurdities of everyday life, sharing our entertaining experience and insights on a variety of topics. Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to a very special episode. This one, we're going to talk about footy footy football and all things balls. All things balls. Angel's favorite topic. What's that mean? All things balls. What's that mean? Think about balls. That's what we're going to talk about today. My balls are empty. Big balls, small Mm. balls, black balls, blue balls. Mostly oblong shaped balls. So balls in your hand, balls in your mouth. Lumps. Ball that bounce. Yeah. The ball, the balls that has a, lumps, has a song those. about balls. Who? Are we talking about ACDC? Who's that? ACDC? Akadeka? It's alternating Angus? current, dedicated current. Yeah, that's how I know it. We're not here to talk about electricity. We're here to introduce you guys and talk about, uh, talk about a question. So, what I'm going to do is uh, go around the horn, and each of you are going to introduce yourselves. Once I say your name, you're going to say your name, and then you're going to answer a question, okay? And right now, you're in the perfect order. I could not emphasize enough how perfect this fucking order is, okay? Now, the question I'm going to ask you is this. If you were gifted your uh, a sport team, whatever sport it is, what would you name it, and in what city would it be in? Again, the question is, if you were gifted a sport, any kind of sport, what would you call it, and what city would it be in? And we want to know what sport you would pick it in as well. So, basketball, Repeat football, the question tennis, one more time. whatever. The question again is, insert question here. And we're going to go in order. The first person to my right. <laughs> the question. <laughs> Do you didn't hear the question? I got lost. There's a lot of details. Are you, are you, are you, are you uh. fucking stupid? Did you, did you use your brains <laughs> when you shaved your head? Yes. Okay. Sport team. I need a name. And where is it coming? Where? Where is it? Where is it's like home base? Where's its home city? It's coming all the time. <laughs> Always coming. Okay. So we're gonna go to the person on my right. The perfect order again. The perfect order. Stephen. Fuck. Of, of course, course. Stephen. He even know the the question. question is, what is my <laughs> fictional team name? And of course, they're called the Sphincters. They're the Sphincters. They're a tight-knit group of team of shitty players. And they come from, let's just say, Tijuana. Because Tijuana makes you think about pooping and diarrhea. And you need a good team of Sphincters to hold it back. Is that your answer to your question? Wow. That fucking sucked. Yeah, that was... Uh... You're a loose Sphincter. That was a I want to hear you, sp- I wanna hear you spell sphincter. Ryan's a bandwagon sphincter. He's only down when it's uh, sphincter. S P H I N C T E R. I don't know. Something All like right, Connor Hopkins, let us know if he's right because uh, I'm too lazy to Google. It fucking sucks. All right, thank you, Stephen, for your sphincter. What sport is uh, it? It's it's rugby. Rugby. It's, what it city? Like, it sounds the like t- defense is the, important on his Tijuana rugby team. It's the sphincters. It's a rugby team. Minor right. league affiliate. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for your rugby sphincter team. Next up in the perfect order, Chris. I'm sure this is going to be delightful. 
Who would have thought? Who would have surprised? They're going to be the elk hunters, and they're from Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> they're, from <laughs> they're from Yucca Valley. It's the almighty Chris here. You don't got to pay attention to some of these other sad, boring, not as exciting cowboys because you got me. I'm here. I'm here for you. And I have the team and the sport that we are all looking forward to. And we're missing out on ESPN. They're just doing it a complete disservice. They're coming from the great Highland of Landers. That's all right, ladies and gentlemen, Landers. We got the Landers Outlaws. They are the dirt bike motocross team slash halfway through the competition. You got to cook some meth. And then once your meth is done cooking, you circle back around and that's how you do your full circuit on the racing platform. And you know what? They're the best. Want to know why they're the best motocross team out there? Because they don't sleep. They just go and go and go and then they keep going and then they don't sleep. Mm. Mm. A lot of night games. That's right. It's also where dirt was invented. So it's kind of a win-win for everyone. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, what, what city is not it? Landers. Landers. I, oh, that's not the Flanders team name? Landers from Landers. Nope. Nope. The Outlaws. The Landers Outlaws. What sport was that? Outlaw Landers. Out- Motocross Landers. Slash, slash meth cooking. So Landers, for people who are not familiar with Southern California geographics, is you have uh, Yucca Valley. Yucca Valley is in the good land, the valley of the Yucca Valley area. But when you go up on the hill, you go into this wild outlaw wilderness where there's just not a lot of plants, not a lot of Joshua trees, really a little dust out there. So you got Landers. That's where Giant Rock is at. That's where that there was like that guy living below Giant Rock and Landers for a long time. And also, uh, people raise ostriches and oleanders out there. All right. Thank you, Chris, for your... Hold on. Lander Outlaws. Laws? Outlaws? Outlanders? Outlaws. The Landers. Landers. Outlaws. We'll get it. We'll get it. All right. Thank you, Chris. Next up is... Ryan. What up, Coinopians? It's your favorite cowboy. And guess what? This week you get drunk, old Ryan, because I'm about four whiskey diet cokes deep, baby. <laughs> You're in for a fucking treat. Oh, boy. Now Angel oh, shit. has asked for me to create a sports team on the spot, and I got a treat for you motherfuckers, because I'm bringing to you on this night... You're going to meet the Reno Rammers, baby. And they are the <laughs> professional tag team of the the state of Nevada, the Reno City Cowboys, baby. And they're the tag team champions of the world. And they'll show you the best time of your life as you watch them do the power butt slam over and over to crush their opponents to the end of time. Ooh, I heard they got a mean leg lock. They got tight butts. <laughs> that sounds so aggressive. What is their uh what is their uniform? What does their uniform look like? They got the tightest spandex and the the tightest thigh boots you've ever seen. Bright yellow, but on the crotch it's fire red. Oh baby. <laughs> is that like an intimidation factor? Is that like the New Zealand rugby team that tries to psych out the other opponent? And they do have tattoos, but they only have tattoos on one spot. Both of them have tattooed smiley faces on their fucking nipples because they ain't bitches like Steven. Man. There you go. We met our quota with uh, tattoo nipples. All right. So thank the other you, day I was uh, taking fat shit, and it was coming out a little slow. And I was like, uh-oh, I think it's not going to come out all the way. So it's stuck in between out and in. So I was thinking there while I was sitting on my bidet toilet, and... I was thinking, do I reach back there and grab it with my fingers and pull it out and give it a little assist? Or do I sit here and push and risk the chance of dying like Elvis Presley? You know what I did, Angel? Got a soda? You, uh, you squeezed, no, no, right? No, no. What is it? I did, the, I did this little trick. And it's uh, you like pucker and you pull up and suck that turd back up into your butt a little bit. And then you push it back down again and you do it again and again. And it's going in and out, but slowly it's going out a little bit more each time. And eventually that gigantic log fell into the toilet and made a mess in my toilet. <laughs> it's playing prairie yeah. dog. Jesus Christ. That's that's 3D chess there, friend. Poop story quota done. Oh, very good. We're killing it in the first five minutes. Thank you very oh, much, man. Ryan, for man. your um, fire crotch team. Uh, wrestlers, right? In Reno? I sure hope they're wrestlers. Uh, me too. The way he was talking about it. Yeah. 
Ryan? Do they have a... Ooh, Ryan, what's their signature move? I told you. It's the butt ram. The butt oh, yeah, ram. Yeah, the butt ram. Pay attention, <laughs> it like, Chris. It was the can, power butt ram. Can Strong you describe theory. how to perform the power butt ram for the audience? Oh, I'll show you how I perform the power <laughs> butt ram when it's my time to pick a fucking bone. Mm. Oh. Because I'm coming for you, Christopher. All right. From the top <laughs> rope. <laughs> the cream always rises to the top. The cream <laughs> rises to the top. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Ryan. I'm going to go ahead and close it out. Uh, uh, let's see. We're heading to Norway, gentlemen, uh, where the average cup size is a D, and we're going to be the Norwegian milkers. Oh, my God. That's so much better than mine. <laughs> I know. Are you sure you don't have room? Are you going to put the sphincters on your schedule? No, nah, you know, we don't. We don't uh, we're in a higher division. You know, sorry to say little that. little exhibition game, the sphincters but, uh, versus the milkers. Yeah. We could have you guys for like some yeah. kind of homecoming, I guess. We could. What about is there is there like a minor league uh, opportunity there? Maybe just be on the practice squad for a little bit. Yeah, you could join the Gooches. Well, you know, every every team has to play like one of those cupcake teams that they can beat by like eighty points. So maybe that could be us. Yeah. We wouldn't mind getting our sphincters yeah. pounded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Austrian cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, oh, that's funny. All right, gentlemen, that rounds out questions. All right, gentlemen. Uh, Anybody have any grievances? I mean, uh, yes. Next on the agenda. I have a bone to pick, actually. What? I have a bone to pick as well. Oh my my bo- my so aggressive. Well, well now yeah. I feel like I need to pick some bones. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is going to be a, a quite quite an awful one because I know that this cowboy is beloved by all the fans out there. Thank you. Thank you. And he's even, and he's even related to our one of our biggest fans. And that's Mr. Got a little bone to pick with this guy. Say it again without his last name. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking dinkle. You punish. And you <coughs> fucking idiot. Rewind. And he's even related. I remember my first yeah, time. And he's even related to one of our biggest fans. And that's Cowboy Ryan. Also known oh, as baby. just a piece Ryan. of shit. Just an all around piece of shit. This guy. <laughs> But you know what? This is my bone. I'm going to pick with him. We're uh, it's pick it's it, the holiday it, season, it. and there is an event coming up, and it's called Friendsmas, and we're all going to Friendsmas. Mm-hmm, it's going to be mm-hmm. a great event. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a great time. Great time. Out by we all. decided a year or two ago that we're going to make Friendsmas a potluck, but not just any potluck, a fast food potluck, and we're all going to bring our favorite guilty pleasures and throw them on a table and have a mm-hmm. feast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Last episode that I listened to, which was the um, episode 26, uh, I heard Ryan break into my story, interrupted me very rudely. One of the rudest people I've ever met <laughs> interrupted me, but he told me some pleasant news and that the double decker taco is back and it made me very, it's very happy reveal. and I was okay with him interrupting me very rudely. What I'm not okay with was he informed me that I'm not allowed to eat any of the double decker tacos that he's bringing to friends miss because I can no longer slick my hair back. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> that Listeners, is, he's rocking and that is not it. Ryan always says, let's do slick back hair. And I get so excited. Right, I bust out my freaking <laughs> ice spiker gel that is the only gel powerful enough to slick my hair back with. I put a pound of it in there, very uncomfortable, kind of look like shit, but I do it for the giggles. And I get so excited mm-hmm. to see Ryan. I show up at the party, and guess who didn't fucking slick their hair back? This fucking... I did slick never, it back. I you always never slicked, slicked your hair back. So not only are you holding I double tester tacos ransom, but you don't slick your hair back. <laughs> Piece of shit. Bones picking. That's it. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I'm gonna have the sickest, sickest back of this tear you've ever seen this coming weekend, and I'm gonna be in a fucking jacuzzi full of double decker tacos, and you'll get none of them. Rude. <laughs> so you know, I need to. I feel like I need to admit something on the air, but uh, until Ryan so rudely interrupted Stephen about this double decker taco, I didn't even know that they existed, what they That's were. Okay. They had a cultural fall scene, and I've never tried okay. one. So, uh, so ever since that episode, uh, same thing. That I see all my friends are like rushing to Taco Bell to get this double decker taco. <laughs> so yesterday, I was at the job site in Riverside, and after my meeting, I said, "You know what? I'm going to go to a Taco Bell, and I'm going to get I'm going to get this famous double decker taco." So I go there, and I was really confused because they wouldn't allow me to order at the register. I had to go to the you, little you, like you stand. What? Yeah, yeah. There, it's it's. It, 
the restaurant used to be set up for the register, but now it's not. So you don't talk to those people. You just go over to the side and <laughs> plug in what you want. And then you stand there awkwardly and wait for the food. So I got two double decker tacos. And then I was like, I was like, should I get something else? And I saw in there like a cheesy gordita crunch. I was like, all right, I'll take that too. So, so I get that. And they gave me like four sauce packets, which was absolutely lame. I had to like try begging for more and they just wouldn't give it to me. <laughs> so I try this double decker taco. Uh, without really like kind of looking at it, I'm like, I'm just going to take a bite and go for it. And I was like, oh, it's crunchy. It's good. And I'm like, wait a minute. So is this just a regular taco, a regular hard taco with beans and tortilla? That's exactly. that's it. That's because it. I don't, because so, I mean, it wasn't bad, but the beans didn't really have a ton of flavor. I realized that whole taco didn't have a lot of flavor. You get all the flavor from the hot sauce you got to dump on there. But if I'm being honest, I think the cheesy gordita crunch was actually better than the double decker taco. And it made me realize why they got rid of it in the first place. So the cheesy gordita <laughs> crunch can listen, I'll pain. defend, I will defend true. the double decker taco here. And I think you're missing the point. It's not that the double decker taco is so much more delicious than their other creations. It's that it was a simple treat and and it was superior to the crunchy taco because you could eat it in peace without fucking shit falling all over your lap. It had a soft and crunchy flavor, but it had the same flavor as a crunchy taco. But it was just a, a perfect basic little thing to eat. And they took it off the menu for no fucking reason. It is the same thing that they have on the menu. They have the, all those ingredients. They just took it off just to be assholes. It was a very popular item. And they just took it off. I get it. If they don't want to make the enchilada, fine. It takes extra effort to put all the sauce on it and do all that bullshit. The Mexican pizza, maybe they need special like tostada shells or something. I don't know. The double decker taco was way too simple, and they and the employees were assholes. They wouldn't even make it for you. You could be like, "Can I just have like you know secret menu double decker?" And, they, and they're there. like, "No." So can I get a taco but put a tortilla on top of the taco? <laughs> they were so extra. They were like very very against doing any favors for you and that's what my like biggest issue was was like it was just unnecessary and i yeah yeah there we go i'm glad you tried it chris i mean maybe it means more to me because i've been eating them since four years old or something like that so maybe like it's a mcdonald's cheeseburger effect where it's mostly nostalgia not flavor so <laughs> But yeah, I'm happy they're back for a limited time, and I will find a way to steal one from Ryan. Is it a limited time? It's only limited. I so saw it was advertised as return? limited, and it was like a competition of between that and Inchirito to see which one gets put back on the menu or something like that. Well, I'll tell you what. But what I'm going to buy on this weekend is going to guarantee the return of Double Decker Tacos. It's going to be like 36 Double Decker <laughs> Tacos there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm good for like one or half of a well, Double Decker Well, the funny part taco. about Friends, Miss, is you order it. You're like, okay, there's going to be like 20 people here. I got to order enough food for 20 people. But everybody orders enough for 20 people. So there's enough for like 400 people. <laughs> it's, it's, yes. Yeah. It's, yes. It's such a good People are like, why didn't anybody eat any of my 30? hot dogs you're like no we did you're just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it's kind of hard because i i think you just come to the realization you're like you know i'm not gonna be able to eat everything so you're gonna pick like three things that you like the most you're like i'm just gonna eat those so yeah the hot dogs or whatever else was like, the little caesar's cheese pizza over there you're like mm, that's just gonna have to sit i just a go bit. for uh what travels the best like the mcdonald's french fries just don't bring them they're not gonna make it fucking two hours <laughs> you know like yeah, whatever. It's uh, I'm excited. It's uh, in a day. Double sure. decker taco, limited time only. Taco Bell website. Well, at least you gave it the old college try, Chris. I uh, I have not tried it, and I probably won't. I'll force so. it down your fucking gullet. You're gonna be surrounded <laughs> by it in two days. Why? Why would you just not? I'm dressing take a up bite? as a double decker taco because there's gonna be so much <laughs> other stuff there. <laughs> True, but just take a little bite, please. Just a little bite. No. no. I refuse. <laughs> well, thank you for picking that bone, mm. Steven. I think it would only be fair, since I went out and tried this guilty pleasure of yours, I need to see you go down to KFC, and you need to get something real special. The KFC Double Down I've Sandwich. Have you ever had one of those? Do they still exist? Can you still order the Double Down? I, I, I'm not sure. It says, Mar oh, no. Is that where you had like chick chicken as the bread? Yeah. 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 Two, two slices of chicken with bacon and sodium in between. Yeah, that's really going to be good Yikes. for my blood pressure. <laughs> it, look, okay. it looks like they came back in March this year for four weeks only, <laughs> so they must not have sold that many. Like, I, I love fast food, but the 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 KFC Double Down it's too gluttonous. Too? Yeah, it's too is much. it they more than the like line. the Baconator, like from or like the Double Bacon Ultimate Cheeseburger from Jack in the Box? There's some pretty gnarly burgers out there. 
and like the buttery jacks like i remember getting that and getting Ooh, the, the worst jacks. stomach ache because it's just so much butter and fat <laughs> <laughs> and you drink you eat it after you've been drinking all night too so it doesn't help <laughs> of course you know sourdough bacon jacks will forever be probably my number one drunken yeah, food at that's two all they need the on the menu is the sourdough yeah. jack and the tacos the, 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 mm-hmm. what do they call the late night menu is it, is it the, the munchie, munchie box meal? the munchie meal yeah it's, it's such a great thing and it's genius that it's more expensive before 10 yeah. o'clock after 10 o'clock they're like six dollars <laughs> but if you go during the day they're like twelve dollars <laughs> wow that's that is genius welcome to the sports episode where we talk all things sports and but there's, there's, there's yeah. been many nights where I've gotten, a, I've gotten drunk and I just like lay just, in bed like I want to munch oh, you right now. Real bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the good old days. So the good gross. Old days. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for indulging us in your teams. The I milkers. Got more bones. I got more. Bones. Oh, bones! That's yeah, right. We're, we're doing, doing the fucking bones. bones. Yeah. Bone away, bro. Oh, fuck! I got, I got bones to All pick. Right. Let me go. Let me go. Let me loose, coach. Wait, before that, Stephen, thank you so much for your bone. All right. Ryan. <laughs> oh, shit. I just realized what I said. Ryan, what do you got? So, uh, as you Cowboys know, I had some technical difficulties about a week ago. Or two weeks ago, as you guys <laughs> might know. Because that's how this shit works. See, the government tried to keep your cowboy down. Because I had more truth for you all. And for some reason, my technology didn't work. You know, So, I think somebody snuck into my house, sabotaged my computer, and power button didn't work. Now, we have a very close friend whose name is Lad. And, you know, he was helping me diagnose things through an app called WhatsApp. That's what we, we use for encrypted group conversations so the government can't listen to us. And he Good was thing walking Meta, me. Meta didn't buy it. He was walking me through some, some steps on what, what could possibly be wrong with my computer. And, you know. And then one of your one of your cowboys stepped in and said, Ryan, you're being a dick. And I said, <laughs> that definitely wasn't me. <laughs> Just a tad. <laughs> Paraphrase. That what? <laughs> he says, Ryan, you, this guy's going out of the way to help you, and you're not helping at all. Your IT at work must fucking hate you because you're a piece oh, of shit. Oh, yeah. And I said, what the fuck are you talking about, Chris? He's asking you questions you're not answering. I said, Chris, look at this screech, and I'm clearly answering the question. My computer doesn't have a reboot button. How am I being a dick? I don't fucking know. But I felt like Chris was being a bully to me this week, and he kept poking at me this week. <laughs> he can smell bitch. He just wanted you fired up for tonight. There multiple occasions where Chris said something mean to me in the group chats, and I was like, why is Chris picking on me? Well, to be fair, you're kind of a prick. Yeah, yeah, That's definitely. Fair. That's fair. I think so. I, w- I would love to take this opportunity to respond to Ryan's bone because I think it's going to be like some fantastic context. Now, my response, <laughs> my response is super easy. I don't even need to like make it up or try to remember it. I just have the chat in front of me, and all I have to do is read down this oh, chat. He brought the receipts and break that encryption code. Yeah, and uh, and we'll kind of we'll kind of realize how uh, how fun it's going to be, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll bleep out go. the racial slurs. Let's yeah, yeah. There, there you go. So, uh, so you know, Ryan's like, "Hey, my thing's messed up," and and then he's like, "Hey, don't worry, I'll, I'll help you. Just drop it off my place." And he's like, "All right, yeah, cool, no problem." He says, "Okay." So Ryan's thinking my power button's broken, and he's like, "Oh, okay. Well, it's probably going to be power supply or motherboard. You know, motherboards motherboards annoying." And yeah. and and Ryan's like. No, nah, fuck that. It's definitely going to be the power button. We're going to get the power button figured out. He's like, <laughs> he's like, okay, well, so you have a reboot button. We'll just switch the two, and then you'll never use your power button again. You'll just use the power from your reboot button. And the first thing, uh, first thing Ryan says on here, they, they ask him, do you have a dedicated separate button for reboots? Ryan's response, dot, dot, dot. Elmo <laughs> gif, Elmo gif, kind of like shrugging shoulders. So just zero, zero words, just shrug. I don't okay. know what the hell he's talking French to me. I okay, don't know what's right? going on. <laughs> and then he's like, "Well, are there two buttons on the case? No. Then your option is most likely get a new case or swap over everything. Gif, <laughs> rubbing eyelids." <laughs> <laughs> not quite sure what like I'm not quite sure how to feel that one. And then so that, I, that, that means it's gonna be a headache. It's a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I don't wanna fucking deal with that. So 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 in this in this series of questions, I realize that um, really, the only the of the multiple questions, the only word that Ryan truly got out was a single no. So I responded. I said, Ryan, your IT department must love you. It's like, what's the problem? 
Uh, Elmo, Elmo shrug. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then and then Ryan goes on around. He's like, "I was IT once. I'm greatly offended." And then I'm like, "Dude, this guy is trying to help you over uh, over WhatsApp, and you're not like, here, hold on, let me open it, let me check this out, let me touch this here. I'm look. I'm you know when it said like, are there two buttons? You're like, hmm." I, I don't know. That would be the cue to go, I don't know, go look at it, maybe? <laughs> I was staring at it. I was staring yes. at it. I saw no second button. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, but Ryan did have some points. He's like, hey, hey, Chris, no is an answer. And I'm like, all right, all right. No, is, no, no is an answer. I get it. And then after that, Ryan actually really perked up. And he started sending, he started sending video evidence of like, here, look, here's me inside the computer looking at stuff, this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. And is Ryan messing around trying to prove me? wrong ryan fixed his own computer in that process he moved a wire and that fixed it and that's all he had to do so him trying to outdo me fixed it. so i think i think the point when you called me out it was when i got out of my recliner from playing Baldur's gate 3 to actually open up my computer yes (laughs) (laughs) so So it worked out it worked out so, but it was funny because I, I felt like just from the way Ryan was responding, he sounded very offended that I called him out. He was like, being a bully, Chris, and this, all that. And then when it got fixed, I said, I knew you could do it, Ryan, if you applied yourself. And then he's all, I got a bone to pick with you. And I, then almost, we started... I almost texted Steve on the side. It was Chris. I would have responded like, with the elbow shrugging. <laughs> 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 so so after all that ryan's like dude chris why are you giving me such a hard time i said you know what i'll tell you why i'm giving you such a hard time on saturday we all played D D together and to start D D, I said steven said hey um you guys had an invisibility potion who wants the visibility potion ryan's like i'll take it and i'm like um but you're a rogue you're super what's what's your stealth modifier plus nine i'm like you don't need you don't need an invisibility potion you just roll and you're invisible me i have disadvantage on roll so i was like let me have the invisibility potion he's like no i'm not gonna give it to you so he didn't give it to me and then a little bit later i was like now's the time to do it and he looked me dead in the eyes and he drank he drank the invisibility <laughs> potion right in front of me when we could have used it and then and then he stabbed this guy so the visibility potion went away right away and then we needed it again and he's like does anyone got an invisibility potion he had the audacity <laughs> to ask for a second one so i realized i was giving ryan a hard time because i had this bent up tension because uh he, t- he didn't let me have the invisibility potion but i feel like we're all better now right yeah, yeah we're all good <laughs> my computer's back baby. Fabulous. yeah all thanks to chris so and was the wrong uh That's you right. just had a wire that was thanks, came Lad. loose in the power yeah, the yeah. wire was loose so when i first bought this computer it's like a pre-build and i got it from best buy and i plugged it all in and then i was pushing the power button and nothing was happening and then i kept pushing it harder <laughs> and harder and eventually it turned on so ever since and I was like, oh that's fine but ever since I got it, like sometimes I would just take like a, a highlighter and I would just jam it in the power button <laughs> until it turned on. Jeez. And then like two weeks ago, it just stopped turning on. I was like, oh! shocker. <laughs> and all I had to do was take the wire and like kind of push it up. Hmm. That was like uh, that, that was like my wife's car, her her car. She's almost home and her engine's running really rough. It's like shaking the vehicle. She calls me. I'm like, I don't know what to do. You probably need to get home first, and then I'll take a look at it. So I get home. It's shaking, fired up. I go down to AutoZone. They plug it in. They check it. They're like, oh, it's like left cylinder number three. You either need to replace the, the, the spark plug or the... Uh, or the the one that shoots the spark by itself. So I replaced both of them. Doesn't work. And I'm messing with it for a day or two. And I finally looked at it. And the little wire on top, a mouse had chewed it. And it was barely holding <laughs> on. And all I had to do was connect that with a new wire. And it was good to go. So it was the same exact solution to uh, Ryan's. If only Ryan pestered me to go out there and look at it myself, that would have worked. Yeah. Mm. Fabulous. Chris is the bully, but Ryan deserved it. Moral of the story. Yeah, there you go. You're welcome, <laughs> and you know you're you're welcome to the coin op cowboys, yeah. and uh, or the the, the coin opians. Because uh, without me bullying Ryan, we wouldn't you know he wouldn't be recording with us today. Right. This is true. Yeah. It's right. True. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. So for bullying Ryan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I do have I do have a bone to pick that goes into our segment, Angel. Oh yeah. So I didn't. Let's hear right. it. All right. I thought so, Angel had a I thought <clears throat> Angel had a bone to pick. Ooh, did you have one Angel? No, no, no. Okay. Oh, you said you did. 
You said you had a bone to pick, and I got really excited. <laughs> you, <laughs> you're, you didn't resend the gif in the chat, <laughs> fucking asshole. I wanted to see what it said. It glitched on me. So no, so no fucking uh, bone. Solid. Solid. No bone for you, doggy. <laughs> nah, just kidding. I'll read it. I've got a bone to pick. Can anyone guess who it's with? Ooh, Ooh I know exactly Steven, who it's with. Steven, Steven, Steven. Ooh. It's off Ryan. Well, listeners, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, we strive to bring you the best in entertainment, okay? We work around the clock, countless meetings, so many Zoom calls, just to bring you the coin opians of the best of the best. Now, as your executive producer, I have plans to expand the coin op cowboys to include video content of challenges we talk about on the podcast. Ryan's so fucked. This D&D weekend, this last weekend, as of this recording, we met with some other friends to play Dungeons and Dragons. We typically meet at Cowboy Chris's house because he's central to everyone. And uh, yeah, before you go off about D&D, it's nerdy, but uh, give it a shot. It's a lot of fun if you have a, if you play with a bunch of friends. So anyway, during this event, we planned for weeks to record a segment for you, the Coinopians. That segment was the Pastrami Sandwich Challenge. Now, if you recall... The best pastrami sandwich, according to your favorite cowboy, is Busy Bee Market's pastrami sandwich. I had Mrs. Executive Producer drive it down. She spent about an hour and a half in traffic to bring it to me for this challenge. Well, after D&D, the boys were chilling in the hot tub, and one of the friends asked if uh, I could take him to a smoke shop. Of course. Why wouldn't I? We had some time amazed, since the boys were just. I'm amazed that, that you got your car out of that spot. <laughs> I, I got my truck. I, oh, I, thank I, you I got my truck out of that spot, spot ever. But you know what? <laughs> Austin. So, ladies I, and gentlemen, he had to Austin Powers about ten movements to get out of the spot okay. he was in. I thought for sure my car was pointer. stolen for this trip. I was, like, oh. <laughs> and I was like, did they take my car? And I was like, keys are there. He's like, how the fuck did Angel get out of that spot? We digress. <laughs> You know, I used to work in the oil field. I can drive through anything. So, <laughs> But anyway, the boys were soaking their balls in the hot tub. So we left real quick, came back real quick, and uh, opened the door. And I walk in to see Ryan, Chris, and uh, Mrs. Chris standing over the shredded remains of my Busy Bee sandwich. Then... First thing out of their mouth was, he's gone. <laughs> you missed him by five minutes. <laughs> I turned to see where Stephen's belongings were at the table, and sure enough, they were right. Now, did I feel disrespected? Of course. Who wouldn't? Stephen didn't even send a text, not a fuck you, what do you need, or nothing. <laughs> not a call, no video chat, no fucking flowers. Did, did- Stephen and I have already spoke a few days ago. Uh, we're good now. He apologized, offered to suck my dick. I told him I didn't uh, want to stretch his throat. <laughs> However, on behalf of the Coinopians, who now have to wait on the pastrami challenge video and the blind alcohol challenge video that I haven't announced yet, but we're going to do a blind alcohol challenge uh, where the Cowboys guess the brand of, li- of different liquors. So, on behalf of the Coinopians, Stephen, why did you abandon your fellow Cowboys... <laughs> And deprive our loyal audience of the content they crave. I am so happy you brought this up publicly, Angel, because now I get an opportunity to expose the real truth behind it all. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> do, 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 do. First of all, I did apologize to Angel because I shat on his plans and for that, making him upset, I was sorry. I was sorry. I did not want to make a friend feel like that. Now, before I get into the meat and potatoes of this rebuttal, I would first like to tell everybody that we started playing D&D at, well, for me, 8 in the morning. At 8 in the morning. It's quite the marathon. At 8 in the morning. Yeah, that's when we started, and it starts with beers and a breakfast burrito the size of the turd that I left in the toilet the other day. <laughs> this thing was no breakfast burritos were massive. The, this thing was no less than four pounds, and we each tried to conquer a half of one. And that half of a burrito we only sat- got three, <laughs> and it was like a twelve-pound bag. <laughs> Good old peepees put a three-pound breakfast burrito weight in the bottom of my stomach. So that is how the morning started off. We started playing D and D for eight or nine, ten hours, and. 
drank and ate our whole way through that and felt absolutely fucking disgusting towards the end of it. And we tried to sit in the jacuzzi to try to make ourselves feel better and kind of worked, kind of didn't. Um, so anyways, this is where our, our bellies were at at the time. So a thought of pounding some pastrami sandwiches was not gonna happen for me. I think I could take a bite maybe the most, but, um, yeah, I wasn't feeling up to the challenge. That's the first thing. Um, and Angel uh, sli- slid the detail in there. He went for a smoke shop run. Real quick, real quick smoke shop run. Well, I believe that smoke shop run uh, lasted about as long as your father would tell you as he's leaving the family because <laughs> it was, <pretty laughs> it was awesome. oh. I think like that that smoke shop <laughs> was, was all quick. the way in Rancho Cucamonga or somewhere very <laughs> <laughs> it was five minutes no away. No way. You guys were gone for like an yeah. hour. It was <laughs> Talk it's about stretching throats. That <laughs> must have been what they were doing in the back. 20 minutes. <laughs> it was not 20 minutes. <laughs> it was 20 minutes. <laughs> At the point in time, okay, so it was about five o'clock. We had been playing all day, drinking, eating, and super feeling like shit. Okay, that's one thing. And... Let's talk about the selection of sandwiches that were available at the time and what was actually in front of our face for this taste test. I believe Ryan ordered his sandwich, right, Ryan? Where'd you order your sandwich from? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, okay. So Ryan was a, not a willing participant. However, I got 100% of the shit that Angel had to give that day, which I'll take because your cowboy can take the blame for something. I'm not... <laughs> gonna just sit here and say that Ryan wasn't uh, like really into it or anything like that. I would definitely not say he wasn't attempting to order a sandwich, and I wouldn't say that he definitely wasn't happy to do podcast things. I agree on the D and D day, so I would never say that about him. I was very full. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't actually I was very full. <laughs> Hints were I'm dropped, saying, and he just stayed silent. <laughs> I'm not saying that I am not a piece of shit. I'm saying I'm 50% of the piece of shit that existed that day. And there was another cowboy that deserves his sphincter stretched. <laughs> Some sloppy steaks. I was there to participate in okay. person. And the last bit of information, last <laughs> yeah. bit of information. So we've gone over that. It got late and Angel was at the smoke shop for an hour. We also talked about how Ryan didn't really want to do it and he's not getting blamed. But the th- most important thing <laughs> at the end of the day is there was not the possibility of the best pastrami sandwich, according to two of the real boys in this group, the cow boys. And that's the hat. Everybody knows the hat. So the king that's of true. SoCal. That and is true. It certainly wasn't that shit boredom. Nah. Really. Oh, yeah. oh, that, <laughs> that was pretty great. Bad. I'm glad you brought that up, Ryan, because there's a there's a fifth point here, and whatever abomination that Chris ordered was not a pastrami sandwich. <laughs> that shit was just fucking trash. That was good bread with some junk in the middle. I think there was one slice of pastrami. Like Angel brought a real fucking sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> that sandwich that he brought from Busy Bees was the was legit. I guess some would say it's the bees knees, you know, but. I think the hat still would take the cake. I need a side-by-side comparison. So epic failure. I'm a piece of shit. The best part was I was blissfully unaware that I was a peaceful piece of shit <laughs> until the next day. I was just minding my own business <laughs> thinking like, wow, what a great D&D day. That was so awesome. Everybody had a good time. It was the fucking best D&D day. Blah, 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 blah. I get to apple picking with Chris. And he's like, yo, you're a piece of shit. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, why am I a piece of shit? What the fuck did I do? I mean, well. <laughs> and he's like, listen. We were yeah. going to do the... I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was hilarious. Anyway, sorry, yeah, Angel. Cool. Officially you know, on public you know, airwaves. I am very sorry. Oh. Public very radio. Very sorry for... Thank you, Stephen. ...not and respecting the coin Not Cowboys that day. Thank you, Stephen. No, very cool. Very cool. Oh, yeah. And sorry, Brittany. I owe you... I owe you a Shell gift card. Wherever. What was that? <laughs> it's the dog. <laughs> that was a dog? That sounded like a human being. But I would say Angel's pastrami sandwich, it was literally bread meat. That's that was it. Like Ron you had Swanson, to, you had to get you had to work up the saliva in your mouth to, no, to crack open wet one of those pepperoncinis, crack open down. a pepperoncini and squirt that juice all over it. True. Oh, true. Yeah. But see, the one that I brought, it was the pastrami. It had grilled onions on it. It had cheese, it had sauce, it had pepperoncinis inside it. You didn't even have to go looking for the pepperoncini. The pepperoncini came to you. Let me, let me you. bring up this video feed. I need to see Angel and Ryan rolling their eyes right now. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yep. 
Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, on that on that D and D day, another famous thing is if you uh, if you roll a one, which is a critical failure, you have to take a <laughs> shot. Well, a certain somebody, one of the coin up cowboys, decided to bring a variety of delicious treats that you would get to take a shot of. So it wasn't just, oh, hey, like I rolled a one, I'll take another tequila shot because Chris loves tequila. No, I had to roll another dice. And then and then Steven looked at his magic secret book of what I was going to get a shot of. And you know the one and only one that I rolled that day? It was a shot of m- Merlot. No, it's Merlot. M- Merlot. 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 Yeah, Merlot. I, Merlot. I wish it was Merlot. That, that's a great <laughs> treat. That's a great treat. <laughs> that was a great little bit of, uh, oh, gosh. of rolling a yeah, D6 so, for that. that uh, was like awesome. one was, was tequila, two was vodka, like or whiskey, three was uh a random rum that i think that angel had left and then four was uh the malort shot grenade so you didn't want to roll a four a five was like chug a beer and then six was whatever random liquor we had there and uh it was quite fun yep so, so yeah. chris got to take the malort shot and it tasted like melted tires and i kid you not for like <laughs> eight minutes afterwards i couldn't get the taste out of my mouth i'm like like r- rubbing a paper towel on my tongue and it's just not going away <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's atrocious, but hey, if you haven't tried it out there, go ahead and try it. Your local uh, liquor store, I'm sure. I'm sure. It'll when be you say you want, much I, I will attest that Malort is the smoothest alcohol I've ever wow. had. Wow, I life. think you just were, you're like genetically like, uh, you know how like some people can't taste cilantro, like they or they taste it like soap, and some people like cilantro is one of the best herbs you can put in things. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think that's yeah. Ryan with Malort. I feel like he's just his D, in his yeah, DNA. He doesn't taste the like awfulness. Like you look up the like tasting notes of Malort on Google, and the tasting notes are gasoline, rubber tires, and like just death. That's like the, the what you taste. But you've seen it. You've seen <laughs> yeah. me. Take I've seen it. it. I've seen it with my own two I eyes. Like you don't even champ. react because yeah. it's impossible not to react. You watch anybody take a shot, yeah. even people who drink, and they're just like. <laughs> But you know, Angel didn't right react. away. Angel had the same exact thing. I was a, I was a champ. I thought he it took it was a delayed right. Didn't you delay response? Angel was delayed. No, he just sat there. He was. Like, you shut the fuck up, Stephen. You shut the fuck. Ooh. up. <laughs> he said. He said it was like a twelve <laughs> aged barrel. Okay, if we're gonna yeah, if we're gonna get mint. together, yeah, because we should, and to make up for this atrocity, uh, we need to do another challenge. And I saw it at Target, and I'm inspired. It's the Hot Ones Challenge. No, fuck that! Like like, like hot that. wings, yeah. You the know hot how they ones? do the hot ones interviews on YouTube, where you like make progr- where you have like you can just do like chicken nuggies from somewhere, and then you just do like a dab of each sauce on it, but like progress as we're doing the coin off cowboys or something. We just like progress through the hot wings, and there's a question. One of your questions at the beginning of this the uh, the podcast, you just ask one while we're eating the hot wing. We eat the hot wing and we answer the question, but like each one is getting harder and harder to answer until we tap out. Redeemed. That is a fantastic like idea. This and my offer still stands. Wow. I will That's fund the idea. whole experiment. Pastrami sandwiches and oh, hot sauces. There we go, baby. There you go. As a poly- what are you going to do to apologize, Ryan? Yeah. I was there to participate. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was fully you there. Were, right? Now, now, whether or not you took that heat off me is not the, not the issue. I bailed him out. He was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. The malevolent twins at it again. <laughs> you know, so so, so I know that the coin app cowboys were, were like, dis, uh, you know, a, a cor- quarreling love. Um, I did have the very unique opportunity where I was like, you know, it's kind of worked out nicely because basically I ate pastrami sandwiches yeah. all week for lunch. <laughs> and it was absolutely fantastic. You know what? As much as it sucks to the quarrel, it makes for good content, I believe. <laughs> it does. Ryan's, Ryan was like, good content. <laughs> nice nice okay all right well i think uh so i would like to talk about a bone i got the bone to pick with this guy and it was my boy got a bone to pick with my boy oh snap (laughs) my son is five and (laughs) as it's really reaching out. Yeah. Give it to him, Chris. Give it to him. Slick back hair and everything. So One day he's going to find this podcast when he's 30 years old. And here's his dad calling him a piece of shit. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> yes, yes. Definitely builds character for a five-year-old. But yes. Um, no, the... Uh, uh, 
I, I picked him up from school and he's like, Hey dad, how's your football team? And I was like, <gasps> my fantasy football team. Yeah. Yeah. How's that doing? I was like, let me tell you about it. You guess what? This weekend I'm playing uncle Steven and I am freaking crushing him. <laughs> And he goes, oh, yeah, good job, dad. I was like, yeah, I'm crushing him so good. But this was so this was a Monday night. And I said, ah, the only downside is Uncle Steven has one more player named Travis. As long as Travis doesn't score 27 points, I'll win. And he said, well, dad, who are you playing against Travis? And I go, no, no, my my, my team is done. All my all my games were on Sunday. He's like, wait, wait, what? Like, well, dad, uh. Of course, you're going to lose if there's no one to play against Travis. He's going to run all over the place and score all the points. I'm like, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. Travis is playing on his own team against the Bengals. He's like, well, who's who's the Bengals? I was like, it, it means Tigers. He's like, he's playing against Tigers? They're definitely going to lose. No, it's the the name of the team is the Bengals. You know, it's besides the point. And he's all, Dad, how can Steven play against you if all your players are done? And I say, no, his players score points on his own teams. He goes, hey, Dad. Aren't you a Chargers fan? I'm like, <laughs> yikes! Damn straight, son. Right here, Chargers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He goes, he goes. Uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, oh yeah. At school, I was. I heard that they're losing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are, son. Yes, now, they and, are. and that was it. That was it. My uh, oh. my son reminded me of my horrible choice to become a Chargers fan. So, I like. Yeah. Real piece of shit. Oh, I know I'm getting him a Steelers jersey. Le- you tell him. I legitimately don't worry. thought about like uh, rooting for another team so Maddie could get. <laughs> but she's already like, I want to wear my Chargers uh, cheerleader outfit when Daddy's wearing his jersey, and I'm like, oh man, I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> there you go. The, the, <laughs> Ask my son uh, what his. Uh, I was like, oh, what team would you want to do? And he's like, the red one, Dad. The red team. Does anyone know who the red team is in football? Kansas City or the, the Niners? Yeah, right. There's a few. Oh, no. Buccaneers? Oh, no. Don't say it. The Don't Niners. Say it, the Niners. Yeah, piece of shit. <laughs> the no. The real piece of shit. <laughs> Yikes. I was like, you know, this world is already overflowing with Niner fans, so we, I got I to gotta do a hard no. No Niners, no Raiders this household. Let's be clear. It's not It's not full of Niner fans. It's full of bandwagon pieces of shit. They're not true fans. <laughs> Especially that schmikey. <laughs> That's true. Nice, nice. So, so with that, and with uh, my son crushing my dreams like that, I just wanted to roll right into it and ask, uh, ask the Cowboys, how are your fantasy football teams doing? Uh, I'll go first on this, I guess. Um, so, I'm a very avid fantasy football player, and I've been playing for a long time. I like to play as many leagues as I can focus on, and at one time, I thought that was like ten leagues, and I realized that's not fun at all, and I've reduced it down to like four. Four is like a perfect number where I hit all the different friends groups and you get some money in on the game. So I have like the family group. I have the college group. I have the work group and I forget a couple others. Degenerates group. A couple other people I've met along the way that want to invite me to their league. And I'm like, okay, I'm down. I'm doing so good in so many leagues, except for the one fucking league that I care about. (laughs) Like the one league that I want to win so badly <laughs> for two years now, I have been right at the bottom and it's crushing my soul. And I have so much history of you know, doing it, well in that league. And now I'm just like, ever since I invited my brother-in-law, I've been just the worst and I'm <laughs> really embarrassed. Okay. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, I was going to say, you know, I heard that league is where all the experts are. Like, you know, you have like the family league or the friends league or the, you know, cheap league league and no no one really dives into that but i heard steven the league you're talking about that's where like the the, the all the cream rises to the it's top and definitely the top of the line it guys was there. the most competitive league with the most savviest players i've ever played with uh for a long time and then we expanded to 12 we invited uh ryan to the league and it instantly took a giant shit in uh skill ability uh <laughs> average skill <laughs> dipped hard on that and then we invited uh my brother-in-law and that dipped it a little bit more and Amir came in. He seems to know what he's doing, but uh, he's yeah, in he's in last. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, I think he's in last cause he has most points. Against, yeah. Because though. he has a lot of points. He should be like more towards the top, but he's been getting shit on all year and his team is actually pretty good. And I'll probably lose this week to Richard and I'll probably get put at Sacco. So for the first time in 12 years, I will be in last place. And I will be buying everybody drinks next year at the draft. It'll be awesome. So, 
Who's who's winning that yeah. league right now? Well, fuck you, Chris. You know what? I'm taking you down <laughs> this week, baby. You know that what? Is it true. is, it is really important to win regular season games, Chris. Yes, you're right. There's only bu- there's only one bye week, so I sure hope you're at the top. <laughs> I am. I'm right there. I'm uh this. If I get a win this week, I just might clinch that first round bye. We'll see. But I'm you're gonna, gonna love win this week. Me and my brother are taking you down, baby. You're going fucking down to pound town because the cream always rises. To Ryan, the top. you're one game ahead of me, and if you lose, I'll take you over on points. So you better hope not because we have a Twinkies bet. <laughs> not with you, I guess it's with your brother. Not with me. Not with me. I yeah, that's right. Feeding your brother. You know, those Ryan, Twinkies. I was going to ask: Do you have any? Do you have any players on your team that are just doing like exceptionally well or exceptionally bad? Um, our our uh, <laughs> our our quarterback is on a rotation. Christian McCaffrey's pre- pretty solid, but this piece of shit rookie Purdy, he's always there. Not a rookie. You know, he either does twelve points or he does twenty two points. He's a rookie in my heart, you piece of shit. He's not proven. He's MVP, uh, like lead. In, he's the number one. <laughs> he's not going to be the fucking. He's MVP. the number one uh, odds on favorite to win the MVP. Here's a fucking spoiler that's going to be fucking cemented in gold in two weeks when you Cowboys hear this because fucking Purdy broke his shoulder wow. this weekend, baby, there and how go. it can happen. If that actually happens, Wait, I think so, your brother so, might kill you. <laughs> it could legitimately it. kill you. That'd be it. <laughs> Wait, so, so Ryan, if, 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 I'm, if I'm looking at this correctly, you, are, are you telling me that your team at one time consisted of Christian McCaffrey, Puka Nakua, Tyreek Hill, Noah Brown, and Brock Purdy, and you are you're you're already eliminated from playoffs. Okay, a how, chance do, we can how make did that Chris, happen? A, if the stars align, we can there's still a, make there the playoffs. There is a correction. I have to admit, Puka did not come to his team until he traded away the number one receiver in football, Tyreek Hill. That's when he received Puka because. That was my brother's decision. This is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in fantasy football of all time. Ryan and his brother were so good at drafting. They drafted the absolute number one player in fantasy football, Christian McCaffrey, far and away the best player that you can have on your team. And next in line, which is also far away from the competition, is number two, Tyreek Hill. Those two guys are so good at their uh, their position that they create a positional advantage over everybody else you're playing. To have those two guys on your team, it is a championship. You just need to get it. You know, you just need to wait. It's going to be a championship. Hey, S- Steven, I got a, I got a stat what? for you. Um, I'm looking at Tyreek Hill. So did you know that week one, Tyreek Hill put up 39 points and became the number one wide receiver yes. in the league? And do you know that he was never dethroned no. again? He has been the number one wide receiver he, every week. And 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 one last thing to cut you off there: he has scored twenty or more points in all of his games except yeah. for three. So he's had ten weeks. What's his lowest score? More What's than his lowest points. score? Uh, his his lowest score is eight point five, eight point seven. Those are his, okay. So and then so and he then actually 20s. did get under ten, but. Um, either way, I mean, he's so much better than the next receiver that, I mean, if you have him and you have Christian McCaffrey and the rest of your team has good pieces too, you're going to win a championship. It just, you can't get that lucky. But what does Ryan and his brother do? They trade him away for scraps. He trades Tyreek Hill away for Tyreek Hill's backup, a garbage quarterback and, a rookie named Puka, who actually is a good player. I'm not going to lie, but it's nowhere close to being on Tyreek Hill's level. So shit like that, just like you deserve to be where you're at, Ryan. And that's all I got to say about that. J- Jalen Waddle, one game over 20, mm, two games over 14. So the real question is, Ryan, Everything else is, was under 10. how sad are you that he's permanently attached to your team and no longer can be kicked out? Because once you're in the league, you're in until you quit. We can, sep- yeah, we can separate at some if point. If a team leaves, you have you will get first choice of separating or not. Correct. But the twins can all, but the twins can also him. separate as well. But I don't think they want to. Mm. Eric doesn't want to be a solo team. I will nice. once 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 I'm free to be solo again. I will. <laughs> time stamp. Uh, okay. Time stamp. Well, Chris, let me tell you how my. Uh, fantasy football i'm in two leagues yeah i was just looking for your stats yeah i'm 11th in yours um and i just uh so i yeah i downloaded um the sleeper app again on my ipad 
And uh, yeah, I'm in 11th, and that's because I keep forgetting to uh, stock. You know, people are on buys, and then I can't keep up with the buys because I'm I'm a terrible player. And the other one, I'm actually in second. It's the one at work. Ooh. So who? So, so who's that one? Who's your lucky. best? Like two, two or three players on your work league? My work league. Yeah. Well, is, is, you said that's the one you're in second, right? The whatever one you're in second. Who's your best two or three players? Oh, I gotta. I just said it and forget it, if I'm honest. Solid. I love the um, commitment to it. Now, while you're looking that up and thinking <laughs> about it, I'm going to look at Angel in my league. <clears throat> this is this is his team. You want you want to give uh, Ryan a see if you want to give him a rate. So he's got Tua, DeAndre Swift, Najee Harris, Rasheed Rice, Drake London, Dallas Goddard, Stephen Diggs, Stephon Diggs. Mostly trash. Yep. How dare you? How dare you, <laughs> Stephen? Unreliable trash. <laughs> Those got me eleventh. Okay, <laughs> Stephon Diggs yes, is Stephon exactly Diggs is the, you. not last. You're not last. That's right. I'm not last. That would suck. And I was going to lose to last if I didn't uh, check my sleeper app. So yeah, you're right, Stephen. Stephon Diggs is wide receiver seven. Everyone else on there is complete garbage. For where you drafted him though, Stephon Diggs is high. Is like very much underperforming. I mean, you probably drafted him to be a top five receiver, and at seven, yeah. it seems like it's close, but it's pretty low for how how much you had to how many resources you had to allocate to get that guy and his his average is 15 which is which i agree i'm pretty sure stefan diggs was probably a first and or second round pick that was was the end of the first early second most of the time yeah Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's crazy i mean every year there's i mean at least he's performing i mean it could be a total bust like there's a lot of dudes in the first round that go that are just totally busting on people right now busting all over their fucking faces do you guys like going to sports events hit and miss hit and miss. i like going to sports again it's much more than watching at home even if it's like yeah you get some of your buddies around a tv and like have a good house party while watching sports um you know you know having the friends there automatically elevates it of course like i got i don't think i'll i'll probably on average maybe watch half a lions game by myself but Ninety percent of the time, I'm in my recliner playing a game, and the yeah. Lions game's off on the corner on my phone. So I don't really sit down and like pay attention to sports on my own. But if I'm at a bar or a restaurant and it's there, I'll pay attention. And of course, at a friend's house. So this year, I bought the four hundred and fifty, five hundred, whatever. I I mean the twenty dollar Sunday ticket. That's what I told Mel. Uh, the, the, the Sunday <laughs> ticket is so I can watch all the games because I'm tired of trying to illegally stream them and the hassle. So uh, on Sunday on my big TV, I'll put the the quad box because it it's big enough that you can have multiple screens on it. So I'll have like the red zone and like three games. And then there's usually a few other games. So I bring out my spare TV, put it in the living room. So I have like a double stack of TVs with all these games playing on it. And I love it. I, uh, Angel, are you playing Fortnite? No. How yeah, dare you? So, I'm listening. No, he totally, look at his eyeballs. You're totally playing Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, motherfucker. So, anyway, so, so, anyways, <laughs> ahead, so I have like the Las Vegas sports book <laughs> thing going on in my living room. I'm in heaven. It's my favorite. It's my happy place cool well (laughs) watching at home i love it but the minute somebody else comes over all they ever do is fucking say what the fuck how can you pay attention to all this stuff they keep talking about how it's so hard to concentrate on any games they just start they complain about it the whole time just like shut up and let me fucking watch the games (laughs) like the only time i felt bad was when my parents were over my my mom was like yeah your dad wants to come up and watch football with you blah blah blah. and i had the setup going and the whole time he was like too polite to say anything and at the end of it he was just kind of like yeah it's really hard for me to watch football like that i felt so bad because we don't get to see each other that often and i just totally like overwhelmed his brain for six (laughs) or seven hours (laughs) i'm like dude we could have totally just watched one game you know like i would have been totally down for that but he didn't want he was thinking it was rude to like say that so i i I love that i love that meme that's out there right now where it's like a girl on tiktok she's like do you know what sound that men love the most and then it's she records herself walking with high heels on like a stone floor so it's like click 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 and then this guy this guy pops in and goes wrong you want to know the noise that most men like and it's the red zone intro which goes welcome to another seven hours of commercial free football and that's the truth that's what that's the sound that men do like yeah uh the one sound that um, a lot of men like sure. is do 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 yeah so, uh, Stephen, would you say when you say when you watch these uh, sports at home, would you say they get 
like wild? Do they get kind of wild sometimes? Uh, when I watch um, sports at home, like I get wild. No, like well, like when you have people together, like watching sports at your house, does it get wild? Depends on the game, the sporting event, and the, the people that are over. I mean, usually no, but if it's like uh, people that are really into the like the team that is playing, I think it can be. I haven't, I haven't had any wild times at my house that I can remember. What about you, Ryan? What when you when you when you've been at home watching the sports things it, 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 or has it ever gotten wild <laughs> like did you get naked were you screaming <laughs> running <laughs> running down the streets yeah I don't know what these yeah things. you started getting naked yeah are you watching sports at home alone is never it's like wild. uh you know like 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 sometimes you know when maybe you're maybe you're like cooking up some grub and everyone's eating and the next thing you know you're like passing around like green tea shots and you're high-fiving random niner fans and the next thing you know you're in the parking lot taking little pieces of bread and throwing it at random people. Right? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? This was about? not at home. This was in a real sporting event that he's referring to. He's referring yes. to oh. when uh, I mysteriously got drunk at the Charger game and decided to start throwing pieces of hamburger buns at random people walking by or down the, down the road. Like they were ducks? Yes. Yeah, like so we were back in the well, parking lot and everybody's drunk and just after the game and we're in the parking lot, everybody's had a lot to drink and some people are tossing around the football, some people are chatting, some people are grubbing and I'm sitting there with a bag of wonder, like wonder buns, wonder hot dog buns and I'm picking pieces off molding them up into a ball and just like throwing them like cannon fodder <laughs> at can- like you know at people down the road at like different cars and stuff people i didn't know just because just for funsies you know real piece of shit the, the moment he would throw it he would duck down <laughs> behind the truck <laughs> yeah it was the best part it was like i would like thought of them getting hit by a piece of bread and going what the fuck was that and then looking around and not seeing the guy <laughs> that threw it <laughs> thought it was hilarious because you because because your stealth check was amazing yeah, yeah. No, there's no way he saw you throwing them. Don't you remember the piece of shit episode that we had throwing ice plants in the pool? It was just that guy coming. That guy coming uh, out. Right. <laughs> I don't know how I got that drunk. That's I like right. was pacing myself at the tailgate. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have like a Corona light. You know, I'll have two of those. Don't want to get too crazy. I'll have a green tea shot, which was just pure sugar. Like there was no alcohol in that. We blew into Chris's breathalyzer thingy. I had like 0. .05 was my reading before we got to the game. Had like one $25 beer at the game. And then this dude that we were with was like, hey, man, I want to get you a shot. And I'm like, down. Who's going to turn that down? I'm down. So we go over and he's like, let's get tequila shots. And like they gave us these cups. And he was like rapping with the lady, pouring the drinks. And uh, she gives us these little like solo cups, these little tiny looking solo cups, the clear ones. And they were like almost three or four shots in them of just straight tequila. And that was our shot. <laughs> After that, I was belligerent. But or how about uh, Stephen? Did we have any Twinkies left over? Uh, yeah, we did have Twinkies. We <laughs> Stephen found the box of Twinkies, and next thing you know, we're throwing this Twinkie around at each other. <laughs> <clears throat> and then Stephen started getting like real aggressive with it. So I would do this like sneak attack behind him and smash it in his face, <laughs> and then he would throw it in my face. And I kid you not, for the next like week. Every time I was getting in and out of my truck, I was finding <laughs> random bits of Twinkie everywhere. Really good time. Really good time. What What about, uh, hey, Ryan, do you remember what happened after the Twinkie, after the bread throwing at the truck, after this Chargers game? No, what happened? <laughs> it involved a football. Oh, God. We started throwing the football. <laughs> so, so, so Steven and Ryan's brother started throwing the football back and forth to each other. But every throw that Steven made, he was noticeably getting more yeah. drunk. <laughs> and eventually, he was like, hey, guys, want to see my Steve Young impression? And he just he just <laughs> looks into the sunset, and he just heaves that thing like it's draft day I was tryouts. throwing it over the mountains. He threw it. <laughs> he threw, threw it over everybody's head and it comes right down on this guy's windshield There's or this head. hood. It just hits, bounces, flops her out. And then Steven does this real casual, like walk away. Like maybe they, maybe they I was just trying to that. huck it. Cause like we kept scooting farther and farther away from each other. And I'm like, I don't have depth perception at this point. And I'm like, dude, I'm just chucking it. And that one got way to the right. I don't know. I threw it way to the right. And it was just like landed on a <laughs> dude's car. Boom. And I was like, Oh, yeah. gotta go. <laughs> yep. 
Oh, they were all standing around there like, hey, who do that? Hey, hey who do that? And Steven, Steven's no just idea. gone. We don't know where he's at. You all know what? Sudden. My boss was there and he acts so innocent. But when we're on the golf course and he hits people's cars or their houses, he sure as hell doesn't fucking admit to his shit. He was on a course and he, <laughs> he broke somebody's window in his car window. Uh, he was golfing in ranch, uh, that Sierra Vista over in Fontana. And mm-hmm. he teed off and dude, he broke someone's window and like the dude comes out right away, goes right up to his group and goes, Hey, who broke that window? And he looks at him and goes, I don't know, man. It wasn't me. <laughs> and there's nobody else on the hole. <laughs> just, just them. Us. <laughs> and he goes, I don't know, man. It wasn't me. And just stone faced, shaggied it. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck and you're talking about. Can, gets away with it. You just deny. <laughs> You know, I think I think what you're trying to attribute to is the one uh, the one attribute that he's really good at is he just has raw confidence. He can just say stuff with confidence. Yeah. You, you know who else can say stuff with confidence? Uh, who? A certain cowboy says, "I am the best at NFL blitz." Ooh. Oh, baby, I had the greatest. I had Ooh. the greatest reign of all time. Unbeatable, I unbeatable. Had Angel, you're muted. Had keyword had and ryan who who ended that for you uh, was it you i think it was you <laughs> yeah it was at your brother's on friends miss because 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 steven would just sit back and just <laughs> start to observe i watched you, you. Watch i studied you <laughs> i saw all your weaknesses and i pounced <laughs> he cracked it he cracked right what was Ryan's, Ryan's strategy? strategy was to like, uh, I forget, but there was something that was really effective against him and it was to like throw it to my running back and then to throw it again. Cause he would always like try to sack my quarterback. So all I had to do is like avert the pressure. Was, I played the game, baby. It, it's called NFL yeah, blitz. I just blitz, baby. <laughs> I, I think I think that's what you meant to say was Ryan's strategy is when he's on defense, he blitzes every single time so hard that you have like mere seconds to get rid of the ball. Yes. And you figured out how to get around that. So I did a, like a flea flick, uh, one of those like RBH back tosses. So you like pitch it out to your running back real quick before that guy hits your quarterback. And then at that point, you have some time to like get the ball downfield. And then on defense, I was... Uh, figured out his weakness too and that's like i didn't blitz so what i did was i didn't blitz and i forced him to throw but in blitz if you know the game the the yep. receiver that your quarterback will throw to is highlighted so everybody knows who the potential wide receiver is and so all i had to do was sit back with my safety and look at the one that would get highlighted and right as he would throw i would fucking tackle the guy (laughs) (laughs) and you know what it was fucking working (laughs) (laughs) he's like i don't know what to do (laughs) but uh still close games though it wasn't blowouts but uh ryan had like a fantastic rain it was what, like twelve games more? Was it more than that? It was just. It was like a full year that I went yeah. undefeated. All these people were like, "I'm way better." Ryan doesn't know anything about football. I'm going to trash him, and Ryan would just humble player <laughs> after player after player. And it was embarrassing, and you didn't understand why. <laughs> and he would giggle just like he's doing now. And yeah, lots of uh, <laughs> lots of broken hearts. So uh, after you scored the touchdown, would you guys go for the one or the two after? It's oh, I was cocky as shit. I go for two, baby. <laughs> Every time he went for two. Yeah. <laughs> you can and you don't I think you for the one point, you don't even kick a field goal, it just goes one point, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't it's have to do anything. It's, it's a ninety nine percent chance, I think. Yeah. Well, there's a way you can miss it. I th- I thought it literally says free. Okay. Yeah, that's I, that's what I thought it was too. I don't yeah, I don't know if you can miss it, but God, that game's so frustrating. You'll be like all like you'll be on the way to like getting the touchdown, like coming back, and then like your dude fumbles it. Like <laughs> it's none of your fault either. You're just like it just fumbles randomly. Right at the worst times. We'll have to have a rematch. We'll have to have some blitz action on the weekend. Would 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 you say video games have had a lot of success with sports? Uh oh, I believe they're probably the most successful franchises. One of the most successful franchises, I would believe, between Madden and FIFA, the two of the biggest games. Ooh, who do you think has the number one spot between those FIFA, two? For, for, for sure, oh, it's FIFA. FIFA. It's FIFA. Uh, okay, all right. Was I the only one? Because when I so no. I have this in front of me, it's like the top eight, and I totally thought Madden was at the top. Don't be a dumb American. No. Soccer is uh, so I was much a more, dumb American. So, soccer yeah. is so much bigger. So than, much bigger. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, yeah. So, so for comparison, FIFA has sold, uh, let's see here. They have had 38 editions and they have sold 325 million copies. They started on the Sega Genesis in 93. Madden started on 88 on DOS, I guess. They've had 42 editions, but they've only sold 130, so less than half of the FIFA editions. Right. But FIFA's in turmoil. Why? Is it? Yeah, because Electronic Arts and the FIFA team have split up. Because FIFA is notoriously incredibly corrupt. FIFA or- The FIFA so, organization no. is corrupt. The FIFA yeah. organization is super corrupt. And they wanted too much money, so Electronic Arts, the developer of the FIFA games, split up. So this year, there's Football Club 23, I think it is, FC 23. So that that's the FIFA you know, the developers. And then FIFA themselves went to some random person and had them develop their own FIFA game, which is like hot garbage. Cause oh, man. Going. They're missing out on a good thing. People have been dreaming that the NFL gives licensing rights to another game because year after year, people are just extremely upset with like Madden as a football game. And there's such a demand for a good football game. And because they that, used to, it used to be like an open license and you get multiple what was that NFL, NFL 2k games. or something like that. It was, mm-hmm, that there's was a few, Sega one. there yeah. was a few of them that were like, people still say is much better than any Madden iteration. And I stopped playing Madden after like, uh, I think Xbox was the last time I played it. Like maybe like Madden 2005 or something, but it just got too complicated. Like they're like, you couldn't just play a game of football or a season of football in that game. It was like all these trading cards and fucking loot boxes and weird shit you had to get. And it was just like such a turn off when all I want to do is play the game. Like I play that retro football game more than anything. Football. Yeah. Related. Retro bowl. Yeah. Retro bowl is dope. Very good at it now though. There needs to be more challenge. Yeah. Would you say, uh, There's big money up in there, baby. How much money do you think could be made in sports? Ryan, <laughs> a billion dollars. <laughs> Like, uh, like, I mean, you, you start thinking about all the different ways. I mean, is it is it just all merchandising? Is it the ticket sales? I mean, that like the NFL is a union, so the Lions merchandise and the Chargers merchandise, it all goes into a pot, right? And then they start splitting it up. I think they, split or is that like not some, how it works? Yeah, they split. It's a the NFL is like supposedly non profit. That's a big. I thought they abandoned that. I thought they finally claim that they are profitable or well profit i think what they now. do is they take all the profits and split it i don't know how what they what they do but yeah the nfl owners they the, the team split the pot at the end of the season all the the stuff all the money they make they split evenly amongst all the teams and i think each team gets several billion a year i think it's over north of 50 billion what is it chris you have the facts no i don't i I, I don't, but I know it's a lot. I just know they're, I, it does look like they're nonprofit. You're trying to, your, your question was how much is the NFL make each year? How much does the NFL owners split each year? I think the NFL owners, whatever their stadiums are making, that's all their money. That does not split. Oh, it's okay. the money that the NFL generates, the NFL corporation or whatever it is, doesn't make the money. The owners get to split the profits. So that's why they call themselves nonprofit. The money doesn't stay in the NFL. That's a little horse shit. Whatever. I mean, it's hard I, to I find. Think, I think the NFL itself is probably one of the grossest of the sports organizations. Why? Because that's the grossest. The one where you hear the most. That's the one of the most where you hear like the players are just pieces of shit, like just beaten up on like pregnant women and shit. Like there's a far more amount. Someone of people just did that. The most common one. So there's a couple of things. There's way more players in the NFL than in any other sport. The team is 60. Like players. basketball. This team is like 60 players or there's like a 56 man roster or whatever. They also have a practice squad of 15 people times that by 32 teams. There's a way bigger player pool. Uh, it's a combat sport. So you're already like bringing in very like aggressive type personalities to the sport. So I think that just the sheer number of players plus like they're already very aggressive people like maybe like leans itself to some of the stuff that gets picked out, you know, the, the beatings or the aggression off the field. So basketball, I don't know. You don't hear about so much in basketball, huh? It happens in basketball a lot too, but in 2015, the NFL no longer is listed as a nonprofit organization. Well, that was it then, huh? Yeah. I mean, you can make some decent money in the NFL, right? I mean, I always thought what a, like a rookie contract is like 900000 800000 something like that. But 
you have some guys in here that are going for records. Like Justin Herbert was up there with like 265 million or something like that. That's just stupid money. But the, the, they have to. They always have to be breaking records, or else if it's not making news, it's not worth doing for the most mm. part. So they always got to make the number bigger and bigger and bigger, right? How how do you how do you think those NFL players handle it after they get out of the NFL? Oh, terribly. Is the the problem is, and this is the grossest thing about professional sports to me, is when these schools give fucking scholarships for people to go and play on their sports teams. The education is like the fifth care in their mind about anything. So they, yeah, they go to college, but their main focus is doing well on a team so they can get drafted to go professional. And they go make billions of dollars or millions, whatever the fuck it might be. But then when their career is done, they don't have the education to know what the fuck to do with it. So they blow it on drugs, hookers, and rock and roll, baby. And yeah, baby. Okay, Chris, I got facts for you here. NFL 2022 revenue, twelve billion dollars. That is with a B. B, which is split amongst the thirty-two teams. So each team took in three hundred and seventy-two million dollars. That doesn't sound like very of much. Raw profit. That is specifically. That is just okay. This is the league thirty-two. Uh, it all is like TV deals. This is all TV deals mm-hmm. and. Some like stuff that's just general NFL stuff. This does not include like uh, stadium concessions or anything like that, which generate a fuck ton of money too. But mm. yeah, they just get a check at the end of the year from the NFL for like three hundred seventy-two billion dollars. Now, uh, billion? No, three hundred seventy-two million dollars per how team. Many, uh, per team. But that doesn't sound like that much money when you consider how many people are on the staff. Uh, okay. Do, does the, do they have to pay their salary caps out of that number? Uh, is, yeah. Is that is that is that profits after expenses? Because it doesn't sound like that much money when you consider how much some of these players make on top of like your different positions that you got to pay out: CFOs, CEOs, heads of marketing, directors, all that bullshit. It doesn't sound like that much money. It's quite a lot of money, and that doesn't include uh, like all the other branding and stuff that they do. It says, okay, this in the CBA, the owners get 52% of all football-related income, while the players will receive about 48%. Um, I don't know. There's, there's no way that it doesn't make a bunch of money. And the stadiums pay for themselves, all the, the staffing and all that stuff. But $372 million a year, what's the salary? Uh, salary uh, cap NFL. Plus, the NFL is really pushing on going international. You know, they've had like games in Germany and Mexico and London. So there's there's enough to push it out there, and there's even more money to be made once they get a few years of international under their belt. But do other countries actually care? I feel like they don't. Yeah, no, no, no. I was watching. Uh, it was the it was Germany after the Dolphins had beat somebody, and so the reporter he's he's going through. He's like, okay, so he's talking to the. I can't even remember the Dolphins coach coach's name, but he's like, "Hey, so so you know, you've been running like this type of this type of offense with like a spread and this that." And he was listing all these very detailed answers, and the the coach was like, "Dude, dude, this is this is kind of like impressive here that you obviously have an accent, but you're following so closely and you're you're exact on all this stuff." And then he, he keeps going. He's like, "Okay, now you're just flexing that of how well you know the NFL for being an international folk." But what that was telling me is that there's interest and drive and people people do like it the uh broncos, if they didn't they wouldn't be doing it broncos payroll or not broncos revenue in 2022 total revenue is 563 million dollars um what are their expenses okay so so half like half would be that check cut from the nfl and then the other half is stuff they're able so, to assemble so 563 million dollars in uh revenue their payroll for players is going to be maximum 230,000 230 million so uh the salary cap at the nfl right now is 230 million you probably talk about coaches and training staff probably bump it up you know another 30 million uh a year and then the rest of that stuff i mean the stadiums and all that stuff like the concessions and yeah but they've probably got like hundreds of staff underneath that so like what's the take home of the owner of the broncos what's his take home at the end of the day Oh, it's the overall profitability of the team. I don't know. I'd have to Google some more. But it, it, I imagine he's taking in too. like a hundred million a year off the team. But I think most I think most NFL teams are 
I mean, the owners aren't doing it because that makes them so much money. I think they do it because they love it. And it's a rare commodity. Well, I'm, I'm also thinking there's value in that. Like, you know, everyone's like, it's one. So all the teams are owned by certain owners and it's really hard to get in on that. Like it usually is a, um, either in a family trust or, or they hand it down. Like it does, you know, like you and like the, the coin up Cowboys couldn't just go buy an NFL team. It'd be, it's not we'd true. have to wait. That's not well, true. Why not? I can go no. buy the Packers right now, baby. They're fan Could owned. You? How much? Oh, that's right. You do got a few of those out there. But I, I, so what I'm thinking is you have, okay, let's talk about the charger Spanos, right? So the Spano, actually, I think it's his sister, Spanos, sister owns it or Spanos owns it. I don't know. But regardless, it's the, th- this guy owns it and he's like, you know, I just got to hold on to this for a few years. And when he goes to sell it, he's probably going to make a ton of money because he's selling this branded organization. I think that's when the money's going to be made. I don't know. It just seems surprisingly not as profitable as I expected. I mean, Pulling in a hundred million a year doesn't seem profitable for just one. Not for an organization as big as the NFL. I feel like it should be more than that. I'm sure there is more than that. Like uh, those are just like TV deals and stuff. You don't think that they make a shit ton of money off of uh, jersey sales and all the other branding stuff? Is that included? I don't know. What about all the deals with like Vegas and you know? the stuff that you don't know about what yeah just saying, just saying it seems low that's all i'm saying i don't know i don't do, know what do it's you, not like tech companies where like you're racking in like billions and billions of dollars i don't know i don't know what you think is what well you know i i think i think the i think the gambling aspect is starting to merge with it though i mean they've probably people have always been betting on sports in general or the nfl in general but i feel like the last i don't know if it's for sure the last year maybe the last five years i feel like that gambling has gotten so close that the nfl and betting pros or fan duel or you know mgm or caesar's palace like all those guys there's so much money to be made that i think they're more hand in hand now i don't think it's separate org- organizations so chris like is i mean i don't know if you have the numbers or you looked it up at all but the nfl is so far in a way bigger than any other american sport i think it's making uh almost six times what the NBA makes, which is the second biggest sport in America right now, or even baseball. Yeah. Like those are all like under 5 billion revenue and NFL is almost at 20 billion revenue. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what Ryan thinks profitability wise or what's profitable. What's not, I mean, it's not Facebook. That's just valued at like 500 billion or something. It's not a tech company that's global. It's just, a, I, a domestic I, I feel sport. like the NFL should be more more profit because the, the tech companies I feel aren't as profitable as you'd think they are as, as, as they present themselves because the, they have such huge staffs and their reliance on like microtransactions and so much uh, advertisement on the internet, which is dwindling. And the NFL is an organization that's been around forever. And the way people talk about it, it just seems like it should be more profitable. Right. The number just seems Now, low. when you say 100 million, is that gross or net? Well, they're making uh, 500 and something million. Is that million gross revenue, or net? Which revenue is. Gross. Revenue. Oh, revenue? Yikes. Each team is making around Yeah, the, the, the total NFL is. 18 billion. The total revenue. NFL is that $20 billion number, and then they divvy it up. Yeah, like after you factor in the cost of paying these players millions of dollars in contracts. It's 50% it of your gross low. revenue. Is your pay your payroll for your players is fifty percent mm-hmm. the CBA that they negotiated was fifty two percent goes to the owners forty eight percent goes to the players. But hey, keeping your labor at fifty percent ain't bad. Usually that's much higher. Yeah, well, they have to like. Well, I don't know. It's I mean, it's still all big big contracts, but the owners have other stuff to do. Oh, I wish I still had Statista. Statista? Yeah, I was looking at that too. Oh, twenty twenty two. It's eighteen point six billion dollars yeah. for the NFL. Yeah, that's gross, right? Like, well, it, so, well, is it gross, like, like statistically, or gross, like it's ugly? You don't want to look at it. No, gross as in like that's yeah. their revenue, right? Eighteen point six billion. What two hundred million are you guys talking about? Because when you divvy like you, the bottom line, you divvy that salary cap for the NFL. That means that the max, and they have to spend up to that salary cap or get close to it, or it's, they suffer penalties. So. Each team is spending roughly two hundred million dollars on their yearly player payroll. 
then they have staff and coaches that you add on top of that. So if each team like the Broncos or the Steelers are pulling in $500 million of gross revenue with everything added up, what are they profiting? We're talking about different things then. Ryan wants to know how much they're profiting. That's yeah. So I assume it seems low that it that an NFL owner is probably roughly making 50 to a hundred million dollars at the end of the year. And then that gets taxed or whatever. And so Ryan thinks that's low. It seems low. It seems low to me. Before, but, but Ryan, you have the individual player like Lamar Jackson's going to make uh was it? He gets paid fifty million dollars a year for five oh, no, for the, the next five years, right? The players are making shit tons of money, yeah. Right? But like the owner of the team, like if you're paying a player fifty million dollars a year just to play the game, the owner that's putting in the actual cost and the risk of the game, him taking home fifty to one hundred million dollars at the end of the year, that seems extremely low. I don't know. This I is, think they need you to help them out. This is another is way. The to owner look at it. that's putting up the risk should be making exponentially more money than the player itself. The owner making one times or two times what a star player is making doesn't make any sense. Well, if, if that's if that is. I mean, no player is making a hundred million dollars, but um, the NFL. So you look at this. You could buy an NFL franchise right now for four billion dollars, right? That's the average. That's like the going rate of an NFL franchise. Mm-hmm. And if you're only going to make fifty to hundred million dollars a year off a billion dollar investment, but you can resell it for more. It's a good investment because you buy this thing, and every year it's pumping you out a hundred million dollars. Yeah, but you've paid a hundred. Doesn't matter. How, Say how you want billions, it, four billion. Because that, four. But that's assuming that at the end of the ten years or whatever you want to own it, you can't get rid of it, or it's a, a depreciating asset. It's not. It's only getting stronger. You're going to sell that NFL franchise in ten years for ten billion dollars. So, but you would hope that if you bought something, you'd be able to make money based off its profits before actually <laughs> selling the company. You are. You're making a hundred million you're not, a year. You're not. You're not. Not if you invested four billion dollars. You're not going to actually make a profit on that until you actually turn off the team to somebody That's else. That's just. It's an investment. You're just putting that money in. Like basically, for you're paying four billion dollars. And that is growing too. So not only is it, it's it's like giving you dividends every year. No, it's not giving you dividends because if you paid $4 billion and you're only making $100 million off it every year, you're never going to make a profit off it unless you sell it. Angel, back me up here. the sucker is always the one that has has ownership of it. No, because... It seems incredible. Steven, I'd I'd love to, but actually if you put $100 million in the first year, if you only get $100 million... And you put four billion. That's only a two and a half percent return. No, you're never going to make money off of it in the li- in your lifetime unless you sell the team. It is yeah. that. It's better to buy real estate. It is, but guess what? Else. You can't. These guys have all the real estate. They're the only people buying these teams are billionaires, and they already have all that shit. You know what they don't have is a fucking cool ass stadium with an NFL team, and they're fucking a badass rock star NFL owner. So it's just a luxury, yes. flashy thing to own a football team. That it's not is, a profitable thing. It is and that's profitable, what I'm saying, is but like, it's not as profitable it's not as you profitable. want. No, it's it not is. Profitable. It's technically profitable. If you're paying $4 billion for it and you make $100 million a year, it's never going to be profitable no. until yeah. you sell it off. Okay, but it's... So whoever, and that's whoever assuming that it'll go up in price. That means it has to be managed well, and if it's a piece of shit after a couple of years, you'll probably sell it for less because it's not so doing well. Not so not liquid. only do you have you're just, to... Your, your money's tied up in this NFL franchise. It's pumping you out a hundred million dollars a year but it's not actually worth that much money compared to something else like you can put it they in something else why is it worth a four billion dollars if it's because only it's, it's like hundred million it's like, a year it's like nine or ten times the revenue that it generates every year and things are what something's off something's off with these numbers no yeah, something these numbers are way too the low team, I, yeah I, the I team generates like, I, be- I believe i believe it must be more profitable than this it listen can't be. the team is it generating 540 million dollars in revenue every year so the company is valuated like 10 times more that which is five billion dollars you know whether or not how the reality something's broken whatever you know what they (laughs) they're any coin opians out there if you can uh, go ahead and comment send an email 
with uh, trust me they're not losing what any you think money is right. with this they're not losing any if money if you invested 4 billion dollars and you only bring in 100 million dollars every year something's broken go look up the go look yeah. up the cost of an NFL franchise over time these are appreciating assets it's like buying a I'm house i'm just listening to your numbers i'm just listening to your numbers <laughs> <laughs> they don't make fucking sense you're just only <laughs> looking all. at the profit that they take in liquid the liquid profit that they take you're not looking at oh hey i bought this NFL franchise for 5 Hundred million in 2005 and now it's 2020 and it's worth five billion dollars but why would it be worth five billion dollars if it only brings in a hundred million a year it's supply and demand there is zero supply of nfl tra- i don't franchise. think you know what you're talking about <laughs> it's a, a super rare come on i'm not stupid i know what i'm talking about it's no a super rare stupid. commodity it's something that only becomes available once every so often, I, I and you have to join a, a bidding. It's, it's a luxury a, investment. Yes. Yeah. It's just a fuck. But it, you. It's do, not it worth doesn't money, lose though. money. It doesn't lose money. If you invested four billion dollars and it makes a hundred million, it, you didn't throw money. the four billion dollars in a trash can. It's not gone. It's just tied up. <laughs> You're acting like you like just totally wasted money. Like you just put it in something, you threw it in the trash can, and now you're only getting a hundred million, and you have to wait fucking forty years to get your money back. No, your money is still there, and it's still getting bigger. <laughs> like I don't know why you guys don't understand the concept. You're not wrong. I mean, the money does get bigger, but there's other things you could put your money to work in that, that'll grow faster. I didn't faster. say that it is. There isn't. I just said that it is making money. And Ryan's like, it's not profitable. It's trash. It's cap. not profitable till you sell it. <sighs> Hold on. It's an ass. Wow. It's a fucking. What's the going bond rate? It's, a, it's an ass. It's an asset. You can take money out on that anytime you want. You can loan. You can take loans out on that team if you really want the money these guys don't need the money but dude, they're on the four so I, Come I, on now. It, it, it sounds like the trick is you want to be an nfl player not an, not necessarily an nfl owner well i can have to sort that one out but would you be pushing your kids to be like hey kids i need you to be successful and get drafted in the nfl do you think do you think not. you'd be pushing no. your kids no no you would no. not be doing that one ryan no. why not yeah, you destroy your fucking body okay yeah that is true That's we're gross. starting to come the like the the mental health issues are starting to come to come to light, right? Your body just gets obliterated. The things it has to put up with. Yeah. Do uh, do you have a guess at how many high school players get um uh, get get into an NCAA Division one team? So high school to college, what percentage of people do you think make it? It's probably like ten percent or something ridiculously low. Two. 2.6. 2 percent now, but that's eligible to play at the NCAA Division One team. So that's kind of the top tier of college. Now, of those of that 2.1 per six, uh, 2.6 percent people, 22 percent are eligible for the draft, but only 1.5 percent are players who actually get a spot in the NFL. So. Your kid who you're pushing to be successful in high school football is 2.1% chance to make it to college. And then that total number is 1% to get into the NFL. So if that's the case, why, why would you push your kid so hard to focus on that and gain the NFL scholarship when they could be doing anything else? Well, uh, that percentage, so that 2.1% that you're saying is probably significantly higher than let's say like, hey, I want my kid to be a fucking pop star or a movie star. Like mm. The percentage of success is probably exponentially higher than any one of those. Like how many Leonardo DiCaprio's are there, Tom Cruise's True. or Ariana Grande's or Mariah Carey's. Exponentially smaller than if you get into one of these teams and make a million. Like if you find anything like a million dollar professional football player, that's probably pretty low in the grand scheme of like salaries for a football player, right? Ryan. Steven. <laughs> so, Angel, do you know what operating income is? This is a new term to me, but do you know what it is? Yeah. It's just the amount of money they're making after you deduct everything, right? Isn't that essentially what it is? Yeah. So this is the disparity yeah. in football. The operating income of the Dallas Cowboys, the, the number one fr- franchise in football, is $504 million a year. In 2022, they capped out at $504 million a year. So after all is said and done, Jerry Jones, the owner of the Cowboys, is taking in $504 million. He bought the franchise for pennies back way back in the day. Um the, the operating income of the Chargers is like fifty million or sixty-five million. Well, that's way better than the numbers you were throwing out earlier, 
where a fucking player makes fifty million and the owner makes a hundred. <laughs> a little different. That's the same thing. The play, said, the owner is operate his operator. How much did he buy it oh, for? Jerry Jones bought the Jerry Jones Cowboys cost. Uh, hundred. He bought uh, the Dallas Cowboys and Texas Stadium for one hundred and fifty million dollars. That's that's respectable. And now he's making five hundred million a year. So I mean, that initial investment is completely forgotten about. Yeah, now. <laughs> that just... number's way better. You were talking about four billion dollars to purchase. Top players <laughs> making fifty million. You owner walking away with a hundred. That's these, still these all correct. These numbers presenting are or way better. Look, the Chargers' yes. uh, operating income. Let's look at that. <laughs> The Chargers' operating income $2? is six, sixty-five million dollars. Uh, in twenty twenty-two, their operating income was sixty-five million dollars. So it's almost eight times less than the Cowboys. So, would you, if you're the owner of the Chargers, would you be like stoked that you're after all is said and done, you're clearing sixty-five million and you're splitting it with your brothers and sisters that all own the team too? Or is that just not worth it for you? It sounds way better, but the numbers you said earlier didn't make sense, and that's what I was saying. The numbers aren't adding up. It's all still the same thing because uh, the uh, Justin Herbert, the cow, the quarterback of the Chargers, has a salary of fifty million dollars a year. The owner is only making sixty five million dollars a year. So, oh, that's terrible. Again. Justin Herbert's making more, but that's just the Chargers because the Chargers don't have their own stadium. <laughs> they have super high overheads, and they have a no fan base, and there. That's basically. Uh, yeah, the only money that the Chargers owner makes essentially boils down to what he gets from the NFL, the NFL check. Like he's a relatively poor, or the family, the Spanos family is a relatively poor uh, NFL ownership group. So that's why maybe you see a lot of the suffering that the Chargers have endured over the years. The suffering. Lack of facilities, lack of good coaches, good trainers, all that other stuff that the NFL has to spend money on that they go cheap on. But Steven... Huh. What about Taylor? How is Taylor impacting the NFL? Taylor Swift. I don't know. Making a lot of girls buy Chavez Kelsey, Kelsey jerseys? <laughs> I don't know. Right. I mean, I, I think the NFL is expanding for that. I mean, how would you guys say you and your ladies interact with sports? I mean, is it is yours like bought in? Yeah, let's do this. Let's get married at SoFi Stadium. Or is it like, oh, oh, you're going to go do that? Okay, I'll go do something else. Mine couldn't give two shits yeah. about what the fuck's going on. Uh, well, mine <laughs> says it's all obnoxious and fuck Taylor and fuck Travis. It's like all over the news and she's tired of looking at it. The Chargers owner bought the team for $72 million back in 1984. And now it's worth $4.15 billion, even though its operating income is $65 million. So that doesn't make too much sense, does it, Ryan? Because why would something only generating $65 million a year be worth for $4.15 billion? That valuation seems weird. But it has to be weird because it's a rare commodity. <laughs> it's a rare commodity. You're paying, And another owner is probably going to be like, hey, well, I can go build a stadium. I can make this a uh, valued franchise. I can generate a fan base. It's going to be worth like double this. And it's going to have a triple the operating income when I'm done with it. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways, Cuban, I don't know. maybe Mark Cuban wants to buy the Chargers, but they won't Mark sell the Cuban team. Sold his team because it's not worth any money. He sold part of the team. <laughs> it's not worth. Hey, it. hey Ryan, you you like the Lions, right? Oh, they're my boys, baby boys in blue. They're your boys. Let's go. Blue. Did you did you hear the Lions stat though? What's that? John F. Kennedy has missed exactly one Lions playoff win. <laughs> Uh. Do you know when JFK <laughs> died? 1963. Yeah. So That's since right, 19. Baby. So, it, right, so baby. since 19. 19- remember, Na- I started from the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Remember that. That's right. <laughs> and, and you know, the funny part was their, their one playoff victory was in 1992 against the Sucky Cowboys. But, you know, before JFK, the Lions had some pretty good runs. Do you know uh, the the last time they won before JFK died was 1957, and they beat a very famous football team. Do you know who the Lions beat? The 49ers. Damn straight, the 49ers yeah, crushed baby. them Let's for the NFC go. Championship. Let's fucking go. <laughs> you want to know the financials on your team, Ryan? Oh, they're probably the most profitable team in the league, baby. They are. Their operating income is lower than the Chargers. They're making less money than the Chargers, <laughs> fifty-one million. <laughs> they're worth about a billion less than them too. 
but their revenue is around the same. You see all these revenues, they're all around 500 million, but the operating incomes are low. I don't know. I guess the Cowboys make so much more money on their other shit because they're so famous and so popular that they make so much more money. They make 10 times more money than the Lions. Because they're a popular team. Yeah. Detroit, small city, small fan base. But that's the beauty of the NFL, and I feel like that's the point missed on all of this, is that the NFL is one of the only sports in the world that evens the playing fields, no matter if you're Detroit, small city, Indianapolis, or like San Diego used to be. You know, all the teams were competitive with each other because they had a salary cap and because they split profits from all the TV deals and stuff at the end of the year. So you could have a team from Indianapolis win Super Bowls. You could have a team from Seattle or Detroit or something do something special. It's not just Los Angeles and New York. In fact, Los Angeles has sucked for a while with NFL, except for the Rams, like one season. And then the New York Jets and New York Giants haven't been anything for a while. You would think if there's such big fan bases, even the Cowboys haven't done anything since like the early 90s. So money, the more profitable the franchise is, isn't directly related to success. So I don't know. It's a cool sport in that regard. Let's wait till the Lions win the Super Bowl this year. I would love to see it. I would love to see the Bills, the Lions, or the Chargers win it. They're all teams that have never won a Super Bowl. And I'm tired of seeing the Patriots, Brady, and fucking Chiefs win all the Super Bowls in the meantime. It's really boring. Speaking of the Bills, do you know how many times they've been to the Super Bowl? A lot. (laughs) A lot, a lot. (laughs) They haven't won any of them. (laughs) So I was looking at one. So one stat in 1991, the Buffalo Bills went to the Super Bowl, lost. 1992, Buffalo Bills go to the Super Bowl, lost. 1993, Buffalo Bills go to the Super Bowl, lost. lost. 1994, the Buffalo Bills go to the Super Bowl, lost. <laughs> Imagine going to the Super Bowl four years in a row. They're the only team to have ever done that. And not be able to pull out a victory. I uh, didn't. They have another thing like all their. Is it only four Super Bowl appearances? I thought there was another time where they went to it like two times or three times in a row. That 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 could be it. I was just looking at the early nineties. Let's see. It wouldn't surprise me if they had more. But I see the Dallas Cowboys are everywhere in here on Super Bowl appearances. Not since who has who's had the most Super Bowl. Do you guys like Super Bowl Steelers? Uh, that could be it. Do you guys like Super Bowl parties? Oh hell yeah. Okay, they just went the four years in a row, uh, 91, 92, 93, 94, and that was their only Super Bowl appearances. They didn't do it like before that. Mm. Oh, they you used know, to it- like Super Bowl parties. Oh, wow. Did the, Cow- the Cowboys beat them two years in a row? That's- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Losing to that. I was, uh, I was expecting like the Cowboys or the Niners or the Steelers for most playoff appearances, but it's actually another one. New England Patriots. Do they have more Super 11 Bowl times. 11 time Super Bowl appearances. Yeah. What about Super Bowl wins? Uh, Steelers are probably. I, uh, I think they're second now because. I think we're tied. Yeah. It's not, yeah, they're, they're not, I mean, the, definitely the Steelers is legendary. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we're tied with the Patriots. Uh, oh, yeah. Actually, we're technically first because we only had two losses and they had five. The Cowboys with eight appearances and the Steelers with seven. So, Angel, did you fall? In, so, actually, I'm, I'm seeing my stat here right now. Uh, the Steelers were fantastic in like the late 70s is where they had like four back-to-back, almost back-to-back championships. But did, when did you become a Steelers fan? Because the last time they were exciting was like early 2000s. I am glad you asked because let me tell you, when I was a young child, see, usually it's a family thing, right? You root for your family team. My father watched uh, soccer. Fucking boring-ass sport. <laughs> so... Not a lot of football, but when I got into high school, you know, it was a family friend. He was totally into the Steelers. I'm like, you know what? Let's go. Steelers. It was around the time Jerome Bettis, you know, was around. and uh, Ben Roethlisberger was brought in the same time Brady was. And boy, what a time. That's why I like the Steelers, man. They fucking killed it. The Iron Curtain. You, you know, that was like, uh, I think on the last, uh, one of the other podcasts, we talked about the fir- when when the annual shit show had its inaugural season, a uh, buddy of ours, number one draft pick was the Steelers defense. Because he knew, oh, yeah? I don't need the guys to score points, I need the defense, because that's where all the fantasy points are at. <laughs> well, I believe it. Dang, Ryan, Detroit Lions, zero Super Bowl appearances, but this could be their year. Yikes. Same thing with baby. Houston Texan, man. Mm. I would watch out for the Texans and the Browns this year and Jacksonville Jaguars, dude. It's, it's fixed up to be a good Super Bowl year. 
It is. I don't think the Chiefs are dominant. Looks like Niners are very dominant. Probably steamroll the competition. But I have a funny story. Well, no, I'll save it for another time. It's uh, about fandom, and you asked Angel like when he became a a fan, <laughs> and uh, how I became a fan of my my teams. But uh, yeah. But then I, don't, I don't know if I've already gotten into it on previous episodes. Let's hear it. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, if there's any time to talk about it, it's probably the sports episode yeah. would be fantastic time for it. <laughs> All right. I'll take up five minutes of your time. Yeah. So I wrote this Have little, I had to wrote this little thing out because originally I thought we were bringing topics and now I, I realize it's a round table thing, but you know, so I was just kind of uh, thinking about sports and Chris mentioned just doing a sports topic and stuff. Uh, so I instantly thought about like, well, I want to talk about growing up and becoming a fan of my team. So it was, I think the earliest I can remember watching uh, football was around the year, like 1994. I was six years old. Uh, Christmas of 1994, in between my Nintendo sessions and playing tag in the neighborhood, I was watching football. And that's what I love to do. Uh, I was a little dude growing up in San Diego, California. The Chargers uh, were the hometown team and everyone I knew were like in love with them. Uh, Christmas came and Santa got me the full Junior Seau uniform, jersey, helmet, pants, cleats, everything. My dad made me a field goal out of PVC pipe and put it in the front yard. Couldn't kick for shit, but it was super cool and made for some good home videos. Uh, I was becoming a fan and it was like a great year because that year, 94, the Chargers were fucking crushing it. Stan Humphreys, Natron Means, John Carney, Junior Seau. You remember all those names, right, Chris? The dream team. Oh, yeah. The dream team. (laughs) The Chargers were cruising through the playoffs that year. Uh, It had been about, it's been 30 years uh, since all all that happened, but I could tell you every detail about the games. There was a missed field goal that I remember when they played the Dolphins. It was like the game before the championship game. They missed, the Dolphins missed a field goal and Chargers won. Then the Chargers played the Steelers to go to the Super Bowl. And at the very end of the game, I think Junior Seau knocked down a pass that was headed into the end zone, like in a red zone, like end of the game kind of deal. And they knocked it down and I was just, everybody was cheering. My family's cheering. We get in the car to go to my soccer practice. Everybody is in their cars, honking their horns all over San Diego. You could hear just people just excited. The Chargers made it to the Super Bowl. This is, And, you know, as a little kid, I'm thinking, man, this is going to happen all the time. The Chargers are the fucking best, (laughs) you know? Yeah, they are. (laughs) You know, like uh, we rode rode that high all the way to the the Super Bowl um, where they got crushed by the 49ers. And um, (laughs) my poor little six-year-old dreams. 26 to 49. Yeah, my poor little six-year-old dreams were stomped and shitted on. Yeah. but, you know, as a little kid, you're just thinking that it's going to be great and the Chargers are great. And it's going to be great forever. And fast forward 30 years and the Chargers have done nothing but disappointed their fans. They're nicknamed the Chokers. The Chargers uh, are the definition of mediocrity and every good season ends with some embarrassing type of loss. Uh, time after time, I suit up in my overpriced jersey and think this year will be different, but it never is. That's fandom, right, Chris? That yeah, is being a true fan. I can truly say I'm an actual fan or just like a glutton for punishment. Uh, that's not all, Chris. I'm also a San Diego Padre fan. Now rewrite there you go. now rewrite everything I just said with Padres instead of Chargers, and it's all factually correct. So <laughs> <laughs> no, all your sad stories. Long story short, I became a fan at birth. San Diego home team fan for life. I can't change it. A curse, not a blessing. Fuck those teams, but I also love them. Good night, San Diego. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> 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 yeah, being a San Diego fan's a curse. But you know, it's. I feel like being a fan of a team is just complaining about them mostly but uh just riding the ups and downs and you know if it finally pays off sometime in your lifetime it's the 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 high will be uh exceptional but the one thing i just think is crazy is when these teams that have like a lot of success like the steelers or patriots of late and you see like the patriot fan sorry sorry uh rhett for this but you see like the patriot fan like crying after like their seventh super bowl appearance and they didn't win they're like crying about it and you're like dude <laughs> shut the fuck up you're like you've won, won like <laughs> you've won like five super bowls you've been in like 10 
Like all we do yeah. is watch your team every year and you're fucking shedding tears. Like, dude, the rest of us haven't even fucking witnessed a Super Bowl in like the last 30 years. Shut the fuck up. Like it's the skinny girl calling yourself fat. Like I don't want to hear it. You know, I will say this though, you know, coming from an exceptional team yeah. fan base, there's a lot more risk, a lot more risk because you know, your team has the potential and then when they don't live up to your expectations, it really hurts. Sounds like uh, you really don't have much expectation, and that's kind of a it's kind of a crutch if you think uh, about it. There is expectation put on the Chargers every year because they they put together good rosters, but they always get injured. They always choke at the wrong moments. Like so, every year you build up this hype, like oh, we got a good quarterback, oh, like an MVP quarter type quarterback. You know, they put together all this defense. You know, they spent all this money on their team. This year is the year. You turn on ESPN, they're like the dark horses, the Chargers this year. Their roster is really balanced. And they suck every fucking year. They suck. Every year. They waste all the talent that yeah, comes across. But, I mean, there's there's really low expectations because have you guys ever had a Super Bowl streak? No, there's no expect. There, no. It's all potential no. and so you get you you, you buy exactly. into it every there's year there's low so you're, risk you're still disappointed it's not like i'm a cleveland brown fan no. where i'm like dude this organization is shit they never have good players they don't have a quarterback i expect nothing and i still am fucking mad but whatever like chargers give you hope a little bit of hope every year and they, they, they squash that i get it being on your side is different because you like i expect them to be great and when they're not i'm fucking pissed because they can and they should be great. They have the fan base. They have the money. They have the facilities. They have everything. Be better. And I get that point, but I still have no sympathy for the crying Patriot fan after this Super Bowl loss. <laughs> well, you know, like when, when I when I compare – so I'm looking at the season records from the inception of the Chargers and the Niners. So the Chargers – actually was first place in their division the very first year that they were created. So they were they were 10 wins, 12, 4, 11, 8, 9. So the first like six years the Chargers were out there were decent. And that was until the mid-60s. Then it was just a complete desert until the late 70s, early 80s, where they got a short run and then quiet again until the mid-90s where they had more success and the early 2000s. But I'm looking at the Niners the Niners were garbage from 1946 until 1970. Nin- so between 1946 and 1970, 1970 was the very, that was, there was only one of the year that they scored 10 or more wins. The Niners in, what is that, 40 years? But once you get to 1970s, then, then you start seeing this run by the Niners where they were 81, 83, 84, 85, all the way into the nineties of, of win of averaging 12 wins a season. So like, I wouldn't mind being on that one. Like I would love to be on the one where from the eighties till the two thousands that they were at the top of their division and making a deep playoff run every time, even if they didn't go to the super bowl, the fact that they're making the playoffs for 20 years in a row, that's gotta be nice. Yeah. They do have a good good winning record, but regular season isn't going to make a fan happy. I mean, there was a season where they went fourteen and two, and choked the like lowly at the time lowly Patriots in the first game of the playoffs. There's time they fired their coach after going twelve and four. <laughs> like they said, Shh, "Fuck you!" Wow. Like you're out of here. <laughs> Wait, and Brandon Staley is still there on the Chargers, yeah, three and shocker. three and twelve or whatever we are. Because the owner's a cheap fuck and he doesn't really make that much money. And he signed Brandon Staley to like a four year deal, and he, he it's guaranteed. So if he fires him, it's just dead money. So what do you think he wants mm. to do? He wants to get Stuck. his money's worth because if he fires him, he's going to have to go pay another coach. He's going to have all that extra cost, but whatever. Ryan, what do you want to talk about? What's very imp- what, what? How does sports impact your life? Like, what is? Is there anything you get excited about? I know you you're really into video games, but do you have anything? Traditions, disappointments. No, because the the Lions are going to win the Super Bowl, and then my sports career will end. That is the extent of your sports sportsmanness is Lions. Oh my god, that's right, baby. And the Clippers. Did you guys ever play sports in high in school? Yes. Oh, it's the king of handball, baby. I was going to ask Ryan that no, next. Like, <laughs> I was going to ask Ryan next. What is it? What's his favorite sports to play? Because I mean, you know, there's a lot of people who like to play sports but hate watching it. Yeah, I'm one of those people. Or watching it doesn't appeal uh, to them. Basketball is my favorite one to play. 
to play. Basketball is really fun mm-hmm. to play. Uh, yeah. Yeah, basketball. I is played football. Play. I think my favorite sport to play growing up was like a uh, two-hand touch football. We'd play in the street or I'd go to the like high school or something. That was the best. But I played baseball, soccer as a kid, got to high school, started playing lacrosse. Lacrosse is really fun sport to play. I'd never watch it. <laughs> well, that kind of makes sense cuz I don't like watching a lot of sports. Well, I don't like watching people play video games. And I love playing video games. Oh, that makes sense. I'm terrible at video games. But do you guys like watching, watching people, people play? Video like, games is do you like watching no, people play video games? Re- I do. Ridiculous. I enjoy some people it. Just, stupid. That, I feel like some people will no, just only watch because it. I don't have the skill. I don't have the skill that these guys have, and I get to see parts of the game that I would otherwise never get to see. Yeah. But just what about just like straight up battle royale type games? You really like watching some dude play Fortnite oh, no. and win no, games no, no, after no. game? Unless no. you're studying too, film. That's annoying. Like a, because I'm the best. I'm the best at Fortnite. So why would I watch inferior players? So, Angel, when you're in Fortnite and you die and lose, you don't sit and watch the rest of the match. You just exit right away. Is that messed up? Uh, I have to because there's nobody else. I always get number one. Oh, you play bots. Oh, that could be it. <laughs> you, excuse me. It's already been revealed by the listener that you're only playing bots, Angel. What are you talking about? Uh, we have a <laughs> we have a character. No, what are the the, the expert witness? That's right. Hmm. Witness nothing. They've analyzed your play, Angel. They analyze nothing. Get on right now. You know, it, it, Angel's Fortnite is getting real contagious because I feel like all the guys in the group chat are all downloading and getting in what on. What are you Fortnite. talking about? It's only one of them. It's Bicky. That's it. Well, I could have sworn there were others. <laughs> yeah, he no, it. Well, no, it's Matt. No, it's Matt. It's only one. It's Matt. <laughs> but, it, but it was also... <laughs> oh, it's Matt. You're right. It was also Minecraft, though. Like, Minecraft's getting some traction, too. Yeah. Yeah. And Baldur's Gate 3. But yeah. Oh, Baldur's Gate, yeah. I haven't played that in a while. It's been a minute. Oh, there's this new game. Have you guys heard of it? Oh, what's it called? I just downloaded the Construction Simulator that ryan recommended oh you did so so my, my boy and i can uh can build walls or whatever we do in there what a, what a proud lethal moment. company yeah I, i'm the one that brought that into the group chat what and then somebody else brought it in the group chat and they go oh what's this and i was like i fucking put that in the group chat a week ago no no that's that's probably something else no 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 Lethal Company. so that lethal company one is it where so you just you gotta like do stuff and then aliens attack you I looked it up, and it's supposedly extremely early access. Yeah, I thought you didn't play early access games. I don't. I didn't buy it. No. I'm, I I bought it. No, I'm I looked it. at it, and it was like, all the reviews said it's like has promise, but it's extremely early. I'm not invested. It looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. The the graphics look super early access. And I feel like, like Phasmophobia was much more fun when we first started playing it, and but it's like the graphics are way better now, but it's not as fun as it used to be. You know what be. the problem with mm. uh, Phasmophobia? It's just not a good game. <gasps> it's fun to play with friends and it's spooky, but the game mechanics are super clunky. You can't ever escape a ghost. They are. Like the game is actually not good and it's a little bit repetitive. So uh, it's hard to like play it a lot, but it is a really good time for a little bit. Yeah. I mean, Steve says we played it for 40 hours and it cost us 10 bucks. No, it's a, a total good book. fuck around. Like, definitely play it uh, like 100 rounds with your friends. You get It's good for 100 rounds over the course of a few months. But I go back and play it now and I'm like, I, I think it's harder to escape the ghosts now. You used to be able to hide in a closet. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. And, uh, it's a little clunky. Sometimes you'll put the, the 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 book into the room, and you're waiting and waiting. It doesn't write in it, but then it's the ghost that writes in the book. And you're like, "Well, what else was I supposed to do? I put it in the room, and I was talking to it until I got murdered." <laughs> it's like right in the goddamn book. And there's not enough uh, like appearances by the ghost. It was. I feel like when we were first playing it, every so often you would see a freaking little girl yeah. or something it, would whisper to you or something. Mm-hmm. In the last few times we played, I've, it's been really like calm almost peaceful feeling just shows up and murders you yeah i would love to find a new spooky game to play with you guys though like a, a game like that demonologist like baby dead by same day- fucking game dead by no this one you can get possessed yeah dead by daylight's not scary to me like those type of games are fun as fuck oh angels you mm. see they announced Chainsaws. the dead by daylight single player cinematic game what cinematic yeah. game uh-huh I'm confused. 
So there's there's a, a game developer that makes these uh, cinematic horror games. It's like Choose Your Own Adventure. So they did a few of them. Uh, but I guess they partnered up with the Dead by Daylight people. So they're making a narrative-based single-player horror The game. casting of Frank the... Stone. Oh. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I like playing... Uh... They release Chucky, Chucky's skin. It's a lot of fun. It's like, no, actually, it's not fun anymore because every survivor just wants to look at you and just like bounces up and down like they crouch real fast and real quick. And it's just annoying. I just want to kill them, but then they're being super nice, so I can't. And it just kind of kills it. They don't run anymore. It sounds like it ruins the moment for you. It really does. Yeah. It's really annoying. Speaking of games, I bought this $80 Baldur's Gate game and I've only played the. 80, I paid seventy. What the fuck did you buy? Taxes, baby. Seventy. Good Is lord. It 70? Yeah, it's seventy on it's seventy on PS Five. PS Five. Seventy Steam. bucks. That was the yeah, cheaper version. What the but hell? Made it. This game, let me tell you, is just like it puts you in there, and it just gives you like thirty different things you can do right at once, and it says go. <laughs> like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It'll kick your ass. Figure There's it, been it, multiple times figure it out. where I turned that game off and I said, "I'm done with this fucking <laughs> really? game." Yeah. <laughs> Watch out! The first cave, and then I go back the next day, and I'm like, "Hey, I figured it out." All right. Let's the keep first going. cave I walk into after finding this like partner to go around. We were on the ground. I go in this little cave. There's little mind zombies thingies in there. I forget what they're called, but I start attacking them, and they just fucking waste me. They hit me for like ten and hit her for 10 then hit me for 10 again i'm on the ground almost immediately and then she, they hit her again she's on the ground so your party's been wiped out i'm like this is the first fight in the game what the fuck i think you're playing wrong i was did you did you put your armor on the, i was playing wrong basically he actually warns you in the be- or she warns you in the beginning like keep your distance or it's gonna hurt you know kind of thing so like yeah <laughs> I, I, I do it like i change my strategy to like hit it and then run away and stuff and try to get some distance but like it's the first fight it should be really fucking simple teaching you kind of like how to play the game and it doesn't care it's just like nope <laughs> just die, fucking die well, yeah it just shows yeah. you your your skill level at that point you gotta up- yeah have, have you hit any of those explosive barrels yet uh yes and uh, you know what also sucks is i was in the spaceship and i critically failed twice when all i had to roll was a two to let the girl out of the pod and then she's just sitting there bitching at me like let me out of the pod i'm like uh, i'm fucking trying here don't you see my hand on the egg yeah i'm trying to open the thing I for you swear to god your first roll is always a one in that game is it yeah no but see th- that be. one i rolled it with I'm, I'm both characters sure. I'm pretty sure it won't let you roll out, roll out of that one. I, I think the idea is you're supposed to lose that one on purpose, and you're supposed to walk over and release her a different way. Oh, I didn't know there was a second release. So, and then yeah. there's some really cool things that they should just tell you right away. Like if you hold down X, it does like a little scan on the ground of things that are nearby. Yeah. The what? That's news to me. Yeah. If you mm-hmm. no, there's an act. Yeah, there's an actual thing that you can. Press and, it'll and then there's a, and if you up. press down the left analog stick, if you press it down, it will show you like pretty much everything in the room that you can interact with. Oh, and like, mm-hmm. and I'm like, this would have been a helpful tool tip in the beginning. Hey, hey Ryan, you should try watching someone play video games yeah. so you would learn things like that. They don't tell you. I feel like they don't tell you to do that. I just found it out on accident. Yeah. <laughs> I was just clicking mm-hmm, things mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, what is that? I found mermaid grass. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, Chris, what did you mean by you'll 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 understand things when you look at the water? Uh, so what I was trying to, what I was trying to imply to you was you need to get off the spaceship. Once you yeah. get off the spaceship and you're on the beach, that's when the story kind of starts. And you know, you find the crash thing, you find the the mind flare guys there. So at that point, you're like, okay, who's the bad guy? I'm not quite sure, but then you realize there's something in your brain, and that should tri- uh, you know, based on that, you should make a decision on who you think's a bad person. So basically, when I was on the spaceship, the devil people were bad because they're probably bad but also the mind flayers were like presenting themselves as good guys because the 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 maggot that's in my brain convincing me that yeah okay like i like i i still view them as the bad guy because they put that in your brain so this one was just two bad guys fighting each other and the guy who was not fighting you you suddenly viewed as a friend which i don't i wouldn't agree with that i think they're both bad well i assume they're bad because they're trying to turn you into a mind flayer (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah anyways I barely broke the surface. I'm sure this game is probably like 500 hours. I'll never get through. But dude, this, this is the game. I think you're really going to get addicted to, it. especially when you when you get up the hill a little bit and you start getting a grasp of everything. And your party, you start getting a full party and things like that. You'll get hooked on it. 
Well, it's almost Christmas break, and it usually gets nice and slow around the holidays. I get lots of days off around the holidays, and yeah, that will be my main really goal. Melts away in that game, just it, melts. The time will melt away, and then you felt like I didn't really do much, but I just spent two hours. Yeah, <laughs> I spent two hours organizing yeah. my inventory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, inventory stresses me out because I like things to be like I like to know what everything I have is, and. Some of it's just useless. Ninety percent of what you pick up is junk. And what do you, and yeah. like? You the send it to like your wares. That piece of shit Gale is going to eat yeah. all your magic. Yeah. So the yeah. So the the if it's junk, add it to wares. So when you go to the the guy, you can sell it all at once. And then if you come across like food or supplies that's meant for camp, send that to camp so you don't have to carry it. Gotcha. And then yeah, because I didn't know what the difference was between my inventory and wares. So wares is just like a special yeah. like junk bag. It, it's. Yeah, yeah, you mark you mark everything as junk, and so you just like hold down square, and you'll sell all your wear, wares at one point. Cool, and you have to find when a you talk to, to the that. sale guy. Yeah. yeah, cool. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely excited to play it. I mean, it, you could tell they put a lot of effort into developing the game, and I know it's like really uh, fun for a lot of people. So I'm sure I could get into it. I just have to get through that learning curve, which sometimes I don't want to push past, but I will. Yeah, it's one game of the year today. Ooh, baby! Good for in that. that friends chat. We got to do a live one. A live what? Like uh, we all got to log in and play on the same group together. Oh. We can we'll, we can all play. But my it at character once. is like level one, or just hit ding two. What? You'd have to start a new campaign. Yeah. yeah, I'm down for it though because it would probably like let me ask you guys a bunch of dumb questions and I can actually understand how to play. <laughs> yeah, I like that, and uh, I'm like excited for uh, GTA. I think that'll be fun. Once it comes out, a whole year away, baby. Do you think that it's going to be open world campaign, like multi MMO type? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's 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 going to be a single don't, player. Campaign. Don't break it. Mm. It works. Single player campaign there, there that you can be, go into like an open world. online mode. Yeah, just like no, the last one. It's always been open world. It'll it'll yeah. be GTA they're, as you know it. They're going to keep doing the same thing. I they're just making co-op. everything about it better. I would love to like be able to do like stuff with people, like campaign stuff with people, not just like oh go rob. Well, you can now with the GTA online. Yeah, like, it's pretty robust. Yeah, but mm-hmm. you, you could do like let's go let's go rob this bank. When GTA Five first came out, and when everybody was playing it, all that wasn't all that wasn't there. Oh, it was garbage when it launched, but it's supposedly way And better. then by the time that stuff all launched and got good, I think most of my friends were like not playing anymore. I played the online mode for a whole 10 minutes. Yeah. Probably. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not very good at the combat. Like people would drive around and fucking waste me all the time. And I, I just wasn't that good at like the online stuff. I like, I like to just explore. It's more fun. Got really quiet. Some background noise dropped a- off. Angel, Angel fell asleep. Angel fell asleep. Good. Hey. <laughs> I'm interested to see how this uh, episode plays out, to be honest, because yeah. we just literally just had a roundtable discussion about loosely sports and video games, and I wonder if it's going to translate well to a, a good episode. Yeah. Curious. It's the, it's the experimental episode. I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried we weren't like uh, giving each other enough shit. Yeah. The, I, I feel like the first half was really getting going, and then you're right. We all kind of took turns talking about it. Could have got. I was expecting well, like some more aggressive Lions Niners hate trauma. Yeah, I mean it might be good. I I think it'll be good. I think people really like when we're just kind of chatting and we're just talking about this, that, and whatever. I mean, you should probably label this sports and video games extravaganza. So the yeah, the, like the the, the the jerks that are just like <laughs> I only like Chris's history segment, you know, like can just fuck off and not listen mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very true. Very true. <laughs> We love all our listeners equally. And yeah. Not fun. me. I have a favorite. Oh, I'm your favorite. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> that tracks. It tracks. It tracks. Should we have the um? Should we have the coin op roast episode? Ooh, a roast? That'd be funny. You know who are we roasting? Other? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I'm cur- I'm curious how long you could do it for. Like, I, I feel like I would ha- maybe have one or two good jokes on you guys, and that that might be all my time. <laughs> a good roast is is way too honest, and I don't know if we're ready to go there because it's just like, <laughs> yeah, we're, <laughs> hey, we're, we're close, but we're not that close. Like, I don't I don't want to lose friends. Like, <laughs> you're like boom, roasted. You're like, dude, I just don't even want to talk to you no more. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that in confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Drunkle Ryan, how are you feeling? I'm ready for bed. Yeah. Me too. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights and uh, 
all the fun stuff about sports. Very, very cool. Thank you for leading the discussion, Chris. Um, no problem. We learned a lot today. Yeah, we learned a lot today. And uh, listeners, thank you so much for coming on this journey. If you're still listening, we appreciate you. Appreciate you. Gentlemen, we're going to go around the horn one more time in that perfect order. And, uh, of course, it's perfect. How dare you? And uh, we're going to sign off, say a nice little good night to our Coinopians. And we're going to start with that one person. That person's Chris. What up, Coinopians? I hope you enjoyed this episode, this uh, free flowing. We're trying to see if we can, uh, you know, just, just have a roundabout and see how it goes. But, uh, you know, if you guys got great ideas, like say, hey, I want you guys to talk about this uh, world of underground mongoose fighting, you know, like let us let us know about that and, uh, you know, we'll see what we could do to talk about it. But my, my favorite part about talking about these type of things is it brings back flashbacks of when... Steven was a wild man throwing bread at people and things like that. So that's what I'm hoping these uh, segments lead to. And uh, my personal favorite was throwing, I had, the, I was the last one to throw the Twinkie at him. And then he threw it at my nuts when I wasn't looking. And then we lost the Twinkie and that, that's where it ended. It was a good segment. Well, very good. Thank you, Chris. Uh, next up, Ryan. Thank you for joining us, Quinopians. Appreciate each and every one of you and all you do for us. Remember, I'll always be here for you. No matter what anyone else says, I'm here for you. That's all I got to say about that. You came in hot with the wrestler, like, shit talking at the start. Now you're like, I appreciate you. You guys are the best. Good night. Is this Drunk Ryan? Is this what we have Drunk Ryan to uh, get excited about? Very tired. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, next up, Steve. Yeah, I don't have much to say else tonight uh, other than... Ryan, if you don't give me a double decker taco, you better uh, you better not show your face around these parts of town. You, know what I'm you better fucking grow some hair, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna get home. I don't know how you're gonna get home from your brother's house when your tires are flat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I'll close it out by saying, you know, as the uh, only cowboy that. Uh, oh wait, played- wait. Bone to pick. How. Dare you? I had something. I was in the middle of my spiel. Go ahead. This better you know, be good. It's going to be great when the Cowboys make it to the Super Bowl. Or not the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> he said it first. The That's Niners. all I'm leaving in. <laughs> That's all I'm leaving in. It's you heard it from Ryan. It's going to be great when the Lions pick the Super Bowl and it's a goddamn dirty shame what it happened to Brock Purdy's shoulder this weekend. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right. Thanks for that. I'm glad I was interrupted for that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the only cowboy that played in college football you know it's uh if you ever want to ha- know that what it feels like just listen to that old song by kenny chesney boys will fall it'll take it takes me back every time all right gentlemen thank you so much for joining us and uh listeners like subscribe follow rate us leave us a comment leave us an email whatever it is and uh with that we're out Peace. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs>